Welcome to the Ultimate Auto Illustrator course. In this course, you are going to learn everything you need to know about Adobe Illustrator. From the basics to more advanced concepts, so by the end of this course, you will be able to create designs, mockups, logos, and much, much more with confidence. If you are looking for a comprehensive, easy to follow, a well-organized and practical course that takes you from zero to hero, this is the right suit course for you. You don't need any prior knowledge of Adobe Illustrator and designing in general. Everything you need to know about Adobe Illustrator. In this course, we are going to learn about all the tools in Illustrator first and then we are going to learn about palettes and controls in Illustrator. And then we are going to create icons using Illustrator and then we are going to create and tracing some of the images and then we are going to learn how to create logos for your business and fundamentals of logo design. Next will be the more interesting part which is creating NFTs like this, this and this all using Illustrator. And the final thing will be creating business cards for your business using Adobe Illustrator. These are all in one place so you don't need to jump back and forth between random tutorials teached by various tutors for learning Adobe Illustrator. So my name is Adam and I am a graphic designer with over 11 years of experience. I am super excited to teach you Adobe Illustrator. So without a further ado, let's get started right into the tutorial. Again, welcome to the course. But before we all get started, I need to tell you something that some of the disclaimers about this course. I want you to understand some things about my method of teaching and about what I actually do here and how actually I teach because I am aware of some of the issues that arise with some of you. So I want you to address it now before it is going to become a problem in the future. The first thing that I want to discuss with you is that I want to understand that this is not just watching tutorials and then doing things. This is a course, not just a video lessons. This is also has the ability to connect with me directly using Q and A section. So ask your questions. I actually try to answer all the questions that I can. I might not answer the immediately and look every seconds in few minutes but eventually within 24 to 48 hours i usually answer every question that i can don't hesitate don't worry about that so you can just ask the questions you have a question you have an issue and you want to understand things well don't worry just Go ahead and ask the questions. I'm here to help you. The next thing that I want to under address in video quality. All the video quality and all video playbacks issues are purely, purely dependent on your internet connection. Unfortunately, I'm an instructor, not the Udemy itself. I can't control your playback. I have no control over it whatsoever. I cannot do anything if the video is lagging and the video is not loading correctly. That might be an issue or most likely it is the issue with your in internet. I am sorry that I am sorry to have to address this but most likely it is the issue with your attention. So please if you don't want problems like that make sure that you your internet connection is stable and have to watch the video in full resolution or alternatively you can just simply download the lectures and watch them afterwards so there's also a solution and last but not least i want to address you that i might not cover everything in th in this lecture i know i'm aware of it i might miss some things unintentionally that you might be interested in so please again do not hesitate to leave suggestions. I might add them as separate lectures in the futures because I am a human being like you. I might miss some things. 
and if you notice them well great thank you for that and please let me know and i will try to fix the at as fast as i can and well this should be i guess and you know what i'm not going to waste your time anymore and let's get started directly into the course welcome to the first lecture of the ultimate adobe illustrator course that you will take you from zero to hero in adobe illustrator so as i said in the last lecture i have given instructions to download adobe illustrator from the adobe website if you follow the same steps that i have given in the last lecture you will be able to download adobe illustrator so after you have downloaded the set of file go to the search option and search for adobe illustrator so go here and click on it give adobe illustrator to load it so adobe illustrator have successfully installed if you get this interface so this will be the interface for you if you download it for the first time adobe illustrator in your computer so after you have downloaded or opened it let's see how to create a new project in adobe illustrator so there are two ways in creating a new project so the first one is pretty much simple which is just creating just clicking on create new button so this pop up will raise you in your monitor and this is the perfect place to create a document in adobe illustrator so there will be many tabs right over here like mobile web print film and video so for the first time we are going to use in the print tab letter so this is the place where you can give the name of your file so i'm gonna give something like adobe illustrator straighter straighter tutorial tutorial yeah so here you can give the width and the height of the artboard which you are going to create so the first thing is change this from points change to point if you have something like pixels or something so let me give you something like 500 into 500 so this is the standard size for creating a logo in illustrator so here you can give what type of orientation you need a vertical one or a horizontal one so i'm gonna give it to vertical one so here you can give number of hard boots basically in adobe illustrator hard boots hard boots means the canvas which you are going to work and which will come in the output so i'm gonna give one in this case but in a real life project you can have multiple artboards in your project so these are these so now we are not going to touch this because it is not going to help that much in this tutorial so you can leave it with zero points in all the sides so if you have like this click on advanced options and change the cmyk to rgb so the reason behind this is rgb will give you rich and more colors which is suitable for digital printing if you are creating a mock-up an instagram post or anything that is going to work out in the gadgets like monitors tablet and phones so let leave it in rgb which is the perfect color for your projects so let me leave it to 300 ppi ppi means points per inch so that is the meaning for it so 
don't get messed up with these options these more options so let me leave it simple and clear so let me click on create so that's it you have created your first ad board in or a first project for your designing career so this is the interface that you will have after you create a project so there are a lot of things in this interface like these are tools these are palettes these are controls these are controls and these are menus so this interface is a little bit confusing but I am here to explain it and make it simple for your career illustrator's career so I am using illustrator for more than 11 years so I have divided Adobe Illustrator into several parts based on the usage I am using it so I am using this ad board 100% so I am going to give how much percent I use these options in Adobe Illustrator so I am using this ad board which is the white color square shaped white canvas or to be technical ad board I am using it 100% and this controls or this tools I am using it 70% and the palettes I am using it 50% and this controls I am using it 10% and the menus I am using it 40% so I have said these things and you will get a clear description or how to use these options and how are these useful so in the next lecture we are going to see how to get master in all these Adobe Illustrator's tools and I'm gonna explain what these tools do in your project so stay tuned for the tools lecture thank you welcome to the tools learning lecture we are going to see 20 different tools in less than 30 30 minutes so I'm going to teach you all these tools which is right over here but in your screen it will be a little bit different which is which will be like this but I'm going to tell you how to change it to the ones which is before so head out to Windows menu and go to toolbar and click on advanced so now you will get the same toolbar that I have in my screen so so let's start from the first tool which is selection tool so let me draw two objects in it so I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool so don't hurry up I'm going to teach you every tool so this is so yeah so yeah so I have these things in my art board so selection tool is the most fundamental tool and the most time you spend in illustrator will be grabbed by this selection tool so let me tell you what this selection tool do so the selection tool used to select objects that are in your ad board which is single or you can grab multiple by either clicking it or neither dragging it so the first thing you can do is resize it so you can resize the size of a shape in illustrator not only shapes it can be text designs logos and so much much more so this is the first thing that you can do and the second thing is you can rotate objects in using selection tool 
the third important thing that you can do is rounding the corners which is going right over here and you can see a arc like shape which is right below the selection cursor so click on it and drag it so as you can see the edges get softer or smoother than this so like this you can curve the shape so this is the use of selection tool the next thing is direct selection tool so this is another most important tool that you use when creating logos and much more so let me grab the direct selection tool and the shortcut for it is a a for apple so i love to use shortcuts but for this tutorial i'm not going to use shortcuts because you you can't follow it because i'm just doing in my keyboard but you can't see what i'm doing in keyboard in your monitor so i'm gonna just use the things using my mouse and the cursor not using my keyboard so grab the drag selection tool and you can pretty much see more edges right over here so these are called anchor points so what are anchor points using these anchor points you can change the shape of an object so by clicking on the anchor point you can stretch it like this so let me undo it by control and Z, or you can simply go to edit and undo so yeah with this you can select an anchor point and you can make it like this which is a pretty much important tool in using or when working with logos so the next thing is magic brand tool so this is a pretty much important tool if you are working with same colors and you have to edit all the shapes or things which are in same color so let me delete all these things and let me create a square ellipse okay okay so let me give it a green color and this too so yeah so let me grab the magic wand tool and the shortcut for it is Y so let me click on the square and you can see that illustrator automatically selects the same shape with a same color so you can edit much more details in the magic wand tool panel so how you can get it go to windows and here you can see a option called magic wand click on it and here a pop-up raises a small pop-up raises and you can see that you can basically select all these things based on your requirement so you can uh, select by stroke color stroke weight opacity and blending options so what are strokes basically so let me move to quick selection or the selection tool and let me add these strokes so as you can see strokes are things that are in the edges or the corner of the shape or text but what are fills fills are the colors that are inside or in the middle of a shape or a text so that is the main difference between stroke and op fill so let me tell you what are opacity opacity is how much darkness you need in your color so in the properties panel i can pretty much reduce the opacity so as you 
can see when I increase the opacity the color of the green gets darker and darker but if I decrease it it gets decreased including the stroke so that is all about magic wine tool and the next thing is lasso tool so for this I'm gonna draw a little bit more things like this sorry over here and let me copy it so yeah this is the perfect thing and let me add strokes to these things okay so let me grab the laser tool and it has no it has a shortcut which is Q so you can draw a pretty much any shape or you can draw with your mouse or cursor and you can select the shape which are comes under that particular sh uh, custom shape you built so I can pretty much see the anchor points which are right over there so you can use it when working with large amount of objects in your project so the next thing is pen tool this is the most 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 important tool and most lovable tool by all the illustrators so so let me erase these things because this can take some more time than other tools so let me zoom out and let me grab the pen tool and the shortcut for it is P so yeah let me click anywhere on the artboard or even outside of the artboard and the important thing about artboard is or the illustrator is you there is no need to create your projects only in this white area you can also create it outside of the white area but in the output or in the export file you will have only the things that you created inside this particular canvas or the artboard in illustrator so you can pretty much work anywhere on illustrator so let me give you an example so let me click over here 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 so yeah so you can work anywhere on the illustrator but so you can't export it until and until you keep it over the artboard so that is the important thing that I need to say to you so let me zoom it and teach you a little more about pen tool so grab the pen tool and the shortcut is P and you can click the first click anywhere and you can click on the second point the second point third point and this is the fourth point as you can see you can definitely create multiple shapes of multiple sites but in illustrator you can build multiple shapes using the shape tool but you can create also custom shapes like like this so once you click on an anchor point the designing ends that means you will not be able to create another pen tool with the same option you can pretty much so let me give you an example so I, I have clicked on the first anchor point I have started it so I clicked it and the line which follows the pen tool is stopped and you can create another shape again using pen tool so that is the important thing about pen tool so if you are working with logos which has which doesn't have options in illustrator you can perfectly create these things using pen tool so the next thing is curvature tool so this option is recently updated in illustrator before this if you want to create a 
curved shape you will be doing like this so the first thing you will create an anchor point and before clicking it you have to drag it like this so you will be creating a sh curved shape you like this so so if you create it like this you can create a weird shape after you have created it so what if you have to create a straight line after you created it so the first thing is click on the last anchor point you have created and click on sh alt and click on the anchor point so now you can see you can create a straight line using pen tool so you can close it with this anchor point so this is the main important thing that you should notice but after the so let me come back to the curvature tools side so let me delete this and uh, you have seen how to create a shape using pen tool or a curved shape using pen tool so let me tell you how you can create using curvature tool so I'm going to add two points you don't have to drag it here you can simply go anywhere on the path or these things are path so illustrator is the most perfect tool for designers because it give it gives these smart guides in in illustrator so let me click here and you can drag right over here so yeah so even here you can click on alt and on the last anchor point then you can create a straight line so the important thing in, in using curvature tool is you can't add it in the same end attacker anchor point because this will create some weird shapes so you can pretty much leave it like this and this is this will be perfect so yeah so that's all about curvature tool so inside these in this pen tool you can see uh, pretty much many options like add an anchor point delete an anchor point and an anchor point tool so these are based on the anchor points so let me teach you what these anchor point tools do so let me click on the first thing which is add anchor point tool so let me click on it and click anywhere on the path path and you can So yeah, as I said before, using the add anchor point tool, you can add multiple anchor points to edit it. To edit it, you can directly go to anchor point tool and you can drag it like this. So this will give you some different shapes in Illustrator. So yeah, like this, you can create multiple shapes. So yeah so this is all about adding anchor points so what if deleting an anchor point so let me go to delete an anchor point and you can see when I click on the anchor point the anchor point deletes and yeah as you can see the anchor points getting deleted in each click I do so then last thing is anchor point tool as I said before you can edit the anchor points using this tool so you can pretty much do anything using the anchor point based on the anchor points 
So, yeah. So let me move to the next important tool, which is type tool. So let me delete this. And the next thing is type tool, as I said before. So click on or grab the type tool. The shortcut for it is T. And so, yeah, I'm already in type tool and click on T and click on anywhere on the Illustrator tab. So I'm click, uh, clicking on this and you can create pretty much any text you want. So let me type Adobe. No, Adam loves Illustrator. So let me make it a little bit bigger. And so, yeah. So you can change the font size and the font style in Adobe Illustrator. So if you are new to designing, you will be probably thinking, what, are, what is the difference between the font size and the font style? Font size is the thing that how much big your text should be. So let me uh, take it uh, example. This uh, sh size is one pixels. This is just for uh, example, but this will not be one pixel. It will be nearly 100 pixels. So let me drag it. So let me take this as 200. Sorry two pixels so when i increase it the number of pixels increases or the number of points increases so let me take to what is font style font style means the different fonts that are available in illustrator so there are plenty of millions of fonts that are available in the world but adobe illustrator have nearly 500 fonts which is pre-installed and we can we can install more fonts from the internet and you can pretty much upload it to illustrator so that's it with type tool so how to change the font family so you can pretty much go here and yeah these things you can keep as your font style so so let me keep like this and yeah so like this you can change the font size and the font style so let me take you to another tool which is in the subcategory of type tool you can see pretty much see uh triangle shaped thing under the type tool left click on it and you can see another option raises so we are going to see only three tools which is under the type tool the first thing is type on path vertical type tool and vertical area type tool so we have seen about type tool and the next thing is type on a path tool so let me create an rounded knot a rectangle which is a shape of which is to fill with yellow color and yeah so let me tell you how to create a text on this path so when you go to the edge or the border of the shape you can see option called path click on that and you can see Adobe Illustrator generates random text or lorem ipsum text and you can edit them so I'm going to type Adobe Illustrator a tutorial which will make you master and do illustrator so let 
me tell you how to increase the font size of the text so in the characters or in the under the properties panel you can see a option called character inside it you can see two options which is the font family and the font style and under that you can see set the font size when you hover on the top of this so here you can increase pretty much increase the size of the text you want I'm gonna keep like this but this is not too good let me send back it so as you can see like this you can create a text which is on the path of a shape not only shapes you can also create on a path which is created by a pen tool so I'm gonna take uh, grab the pen tool and let me create it so yeah okay so let me keep the color to yellow and let me give a stroke so let me grab the type on path and you can see the same path text raises when you hover on the path so here you can see again the text creates random text creates so I'm gonna type something this is just for a tutorial purpose so you can pretty much uh, change the shape like this and you can rotate the shape like this so yeah like this you can create pretty much everything in illustrator so pretty much the same and the next thing is type vertical type tool so this thing is little bit different if you are printing or you you are creating a poster or a happy birthday card or a Instagram post so I'm going to type I do illustrate okay okay so let me place it right over here as you can see this place in the in a vertical shape so that's all about vertical type tool so this is not that much useful in Adobe Illustrator so the next thing is vertical area type tool so you can see that if I click it you can see a warning that is from the Adobe Illustrator this is because we have to create a path which is which we did before so let me again change it to hello and let me give a shape so let me grab the vertical area type tool and you can see again the path shows up so as you can see this comes inside the inside of the shape that we created so let me change it to a little bit more meaningful text Adobe Illustrator but this is not that much useful when coming to designing part but you can see So, so that's all with this tool let me delete it and let me take you to little bit more interesting one which is line tool so from the name suggests you can pretty much create lines using illustrator so 
you can create like this line when you drag the anchor points so click on the first and drag it so you can also create something which is more precise or important so you may need to create a line which is in the a particular length so I'm gonna keep it to uh, 50 or 100 100 is the best thing and here you can keep pretty much the angle of it so I'm gonna give it to 0 so uh, yeah I'm gonna click OK so as you can see this is the 100 pixels point in Illustrator so you can basically give stroke by going to properties and you can increase the stroke you can also click on this drop down menu and you can click on anything you want so I'm gonna keep it to 3 this is good and yeah with this tool you can create lines so there is a important trick that you can follow so what if you have to create a straight line in Illustrator you don't have to uh, check it manually in Illustrator so Illustrator gives you wonderful options to create a straight line grab the line segment tool and click on shift and click on the first side and you can drag it so it is not only for straight lines you can also create which is uh, lines which are 45 degrees uh, to the anchor points so like this you can create lines so shift key plays a major role in illustrator and other adobe's app so the next thing is arc tool so let me go right over here and arc tool so you can pretty much create a shape which is like a little bit arc shape so you can create like this and from the again you can create like this and like this so this looks like a a plant or a crop which grows in a field so, so that is the use case of arc tool so the next thing is spiral tool which creates basically creates a spiral so using the arrow keys you can pretty much decide or you can create much much more things and yeah let me click on here and let me create a new spiral so yeah so like this you can create a spiral in illustrator so the next thing is rectangular grid tool so let me fill it with uh, this canvas with this rectangular grid tool so you can create these kinds of text in So yeah, like this you can create the the tabular column in Illustrator. So the next thing is polar grid tool. As you can see, this look like a spider's web, and you can create these things when you are working with logo creation. 
So, we have seen nearly 8 tools and there are several many things under this. So, nearly we have seen 20 tools. In the next lecture, we are going to cover another 20 tools in Illustrator. So, see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to the third lecture of the Ultimate Adobe Illustrator course. So, in this lecture, we are going to see the next eight tools in Illustrator. So, the first thing is Shape Builder tool. So, the first tool is Rectangle tool. So, as the name suggests, suggest, you can pretty much create rectangular shapes in with this tool. So, you can create a rectangle and you can change the color of the fill and you can add the change the color of the stroke. So, yeah, you can create like this and so, with this tool, you can also edit the corner radius of the rectangle. So, you can see this little bit arc icon under the selection cursor. So, you can do like this to create a rounded radius around the rectangle. So, this gives a little bit more professional look and a good feel. So, there are a lot of use cases for while using this rounded rectangle option. So, the next thing is square. So, you can select the same rectangle tool and the shortcut for it is M and you can uh, Keep your finger on shift and you can drag the cursor. So, as you can see, when you hold on shift, a perfect square is created. So, like how you can create a perfect square. And as, we, as, I, as I said before, you can also edit the radius of corner radius of the square so you can do these things using rectangle tool the next thing is round rectangle tool but this is not needed this is because we can do the same things in rectangle tool so this doesn't mean nothing this means nothing so the next tool is ellipse tool so, you can create, simply create a circle using the ellipse tool as the name suggests. And as I said before, if you hold on shift, you can create a perfect circle. So, you can do pretty much like this. And the next tool is polygon tool. So, this is where tools or the shapes get interesting. So, you can pretty much create like this which is a polygon and you can also create the alternative way is creating like this so hold or grab the polygon tool and click over here or anywhere on the canvas a pop-up raises which says polygon and there are two options which is radius and sides so i'm gonna leave radius as it is and i'm gonna change it the sides to 5 so let me click OK so as you can see this magic happens that if you just give the shapes it will create automatically so like this you can give more than 10 so Let me zoom right over here 
and as you can see I have given 100 so 100 anchor points and divisions have been created you can see right over here so like this you can create but this pretty much looks like a circle a perfect circle so I don't recommend to use lot of shapes unless you create up to 10 so up to 10 is a decent one for creating shapes so let me de delete these two things and the last thing is star tool as I said before you can basically click over anywhere on the canvas and you can see the points so number of points that you need so I'm gonna give 10 and uh, radius 1 to 20 and the next thing is 10 so I'm gonna explain what these things refer I'm gonna give to 5 so as you can see let me zoom it and let me switch it to so as you can see this creates the st a star like shape so let me explain what these things do the first thing is radius one radius one basically means the end point of the star which is right over here i'm placing my cursor right over here so that radius 2 is the innermost thing or the inner, innermost part that the end of the spike end in the bottom so you can pretty much give nearly 100 what, I, what happens so as I said before this creates a little bit perfect circle like this but when you hover on it it do like a suck so like this you can pretty much do anything so let me give it to uh, one so let's see what happens so the same results happens so like this you can create star shapes in illustrator so the next and last tool is flare tool which is not that much useful in illustrator it basically creates shapes like this but most of the illustrators don't work with it because it is not that much professional and useful so that's all with these tools and the next thing is paint brush tool and illustrator we actually don't work much on paint brush tool until we are creating a custom shape but even when creating custom shape we will use pen tool either or curvature tool we doesn't work with paint brush tool in illustrator so but it is based on your need so if you are going to create logos with a paint brush tool this may be uh, quite needed for you so I don't want to skip and waste this course so I'm gonna draw a little bit a different shape and the only superb thing which uh, I love in illustrator is illustrator automatically smooth the edges in the uh, path so I'm gonna give a custom shape so here you can see little bit a rough surface but when I uh, leave the holding you can see it brings a little bit smoother corners which is like over here so that is the important thing that I love in paintbrush too so let me delete these two things and ball brush tool is the second one which is more advanced than the paint brush tool in making the corner smooth so I'm gonna uh, get my name Adam Adam sorry my handwriting is little bit weird and worst so don't um, 
make me wrong so like this you can create a shape and the illustrator makes it softer so so that's all that is pretty much with these tools so then comes the advanced tools so these are the basic tools these 10 tools are the basic tools that we use in illustrator but hereafter more professional and intermediate tools come in so the next thing is shape tool so as you can see the name suggests it is used to create shapes and which is little bit good but little bit bad so I will give you or say you the pros and cons of the of this tool so the shortcut for it is shift and en so I'm going to draw a shape which is a rectangle but it creates a polygon so as you can see when I draw a square it creates a square with a perfect thing so if I draw a rectangle it creates a rectangle so if I draw a triangle it creates a triangle so these are the useful things while using a shaper tool but I'm going to say little bit pros and cons of this so what if we want to create a parallelogram so I'm gonna draw a parallelogram like this it creates a square so this is the one of the important bug that is there in Adobe Illustrator I don't know that Adobe Illustrator has not solved this issue or it is a bug I have contacted Adobe Illustrator for, for this issue but uh, they said the, they said that they will resolve this issue but still it is there I have said this I think so uh, before six months so still they didn't do that so that is the important uh, bug in this so like this you can create a pretty much a shapes in illustrator so I'm gonna create a square like this you can create a instant shapes but it is not that much accurate so let me see what if I draw a star no it doesn't do anything so yeah these are the major disadvantages so even if you draw a diamond or a rhombus it creates a rectangle a vertical rectangle so these are the cons of using the shaper tool so the next thing is razor tool so as you all know these this raises what all the things that we do accidentally so I don't want to give you much details about this so the next thing is rotate tool so let me create a rectangle yeah rectangle is pretty much enough for this example so after I click this rotate tool you can probably see so let me zoom right over here and if I click on the rotate tool you can see a little bit greenish color enters so you can drag it anywhere to here so let me show you how what happens after this so let me move to the selection tool and the shortcut for it is V and let me move it so nothing happens right so let me again go to the rotate tool and let me 
place it okay so if I rotate it you can see the rectangular rectangle rotates based on the point which we have set it before so let me change it to another corner and let me move it so as I said before based on the greenish point the rectangle moves so basically Adobe Illustrator consider this as the middle point of the rectangle and we move according to this so yeah that's all with this tool and the next important tool which is uh, yeah we are right over here so yeah so let me teach you this about in the last of this tutorial because this is not that much important but I will teach you in the last so next comes the important tool which is width tool so let me create a line so let me cancel it and let me go right over here and, and create a line so I'm gonna create a cross line and let me go to the width tool the shortcut for it is shift and B and the width tool comes in so if you click on the path and drag it you can see the fill is gradually increasing so let me create another line to show you better and let me control and W and yeah so it shows like a sharp thing so you can probably make it little bit smoother so as I show you before you can create these kinds of shapes with using the shape tool so you can create like this like this and you can reduce the size of it so yeah this is a pretty much important tool that we work on a regular basis so let me create a a curve using curvature tool so yeah so let me uh, work with this and the width tool so so as you can see it is gradually increasing from here and the biggest part comes over here so like this you can edit it but what if you want to reduce this particular place so you can reduce like this and you can make it a little bit bigger so yeah like this you can make it differently so this helps a lot of designers when creating a logos customly so the next thing is free transform tool so this is little bit important but not used by most of the designers so let me give it a color of a blue and let me click on free transform tool so a pop-up raises and you can pretty much select anything so I'm gonna select this which is perspective to sort and let me click over here and you can see that it creates like this so you uh, this gives a shape of a pot or a uh, a cup uh, yeah so like this you can create different shapes using this this is like a mud pot and you can create pretty much more using this free transform so uh, let me create like this and see what happens so yeah basically this works out only in one corner but this works out in the both the corners so yeah that is the important thing in this free transform tool so the next thing is shape builder tool 
So this is little bit important thing because if you want to create a shape like clouds, uh, a custom circle, this will help you much, much more. So let me create a square and let me create a ellipse. So yeah, so let me remove the stroke of it to zero and let me change the color of it to yellow to see or give a better view. So let me select both by dragging by the selection tool. So go to the shape builder tool and first click on here. So as you can see these are separated and now you can separate this so now you can see that this shape is alone and this shape is alone so you can create like these shapes in it so let me see let me show you how to create a moon using this so let me create a, a circle and a, another circle so yeah so let me change the color of it to blue so let me select both of these and go to shape builder tool and let me select the part which I have to remove. So now you can pretty much remove it and the moon is created. So pretty much the same. And let me uh, show you how to create a little bit more thinner moon. So let me create it and let me create like this there we go yeah so let me change the color of it to this color and let me select both of these and go to width tool sorry shape builder tool and let me select it and you can be able to remove it so like this you can create different shapes so let me show you how to how to create a cloud using it so let me create a line with a stroke of one pixels and let me create a different circles in it so make sure that the line and the circle meets on a same place so let me keep it right over here and let me continue to do it so yeah let me do it again and again mm, yeah so the last circle so yeah let me select all of these and yeah let me go to the shape builder tool and yeah so yeah as you can see a cloud is created so these two things are extra created we didn't remove it properly so this two sticks formed so like this you can create a cloud using this tool so yeah So yeah, as I said before, we have seen eight different tools in this lecture. So in the next lecture, we are going to see the last five tools in Illustrator. So meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to the Illustrators. Welcome to the ultimate Illustrator tutorial that will take you from zero to hero. So. In this lecture, we are going to see the next five tools that are in Adobe Illustrator. So now we are going to start with gradient tool. You can ask me a question. Why we left out mesh tool? Because it is not that much important and it is much, much complicated for the beginners to learn. So we are not going to cover this. And let me tell you what is gradient tool is. So let me create 
a rectangle this I had board so yeah so let me click on gradient tool so let me click on it and you can see a gradient is formed so it is from white to dark the lightest to the darkest part so let me tell you how to edit this colors so here you can see a pop-up raises about gradient tool if not you can click over here and you can see that so I'm going to click on swatches and here you can select multiple colors so I'm gonna click in blue and in the darkest part I'm gonna click something like this yeah this looks good and yeah so let me go to the selection tool and you can see gradient is created so this is a superb thing in illustrator but in photoshop it is much 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 easier than in illustrator so in illustrator we can simply click on gradient tool and we can simply drag it without a rectangle or an object so that is the only difference between illustrator and photoshop so the next tool is eyedropper tool which is more far more important than the other tools because if you are working in a project you have to get to know about the x code which is far more important if you are working with a project because you have to get the color code which is given by your client or you have to give the color code to your client for their projects for their other projects so let me create a color uh, yeah so let me cancel the fill let me create a black color not a black so let me uh, create this type of a uh, blue so how to know the color code of this so I'm gonna keep to different position and so let me uh, pick the eyedropper tool and the shortcut for it is I so I'm gonna keep it right over here and illustrator automatically instantly finds the X X code so this is the exact code that is used in this color so like that you can get the color code and use it in other shapes and projects so the next thing is blend tool so let me create an another rectangle right over here and let me change the color of this to uh, reddish orange so yeah let me select these two and select on blend tool so the thing is click on the red and drag it to blue so or you can also do it in vice versa as you can click on blue and as to red so like this you can create a 3d shapes using illust using blend tool in illustrator so that's all with blend tool and the next tool is symbol sp sprayer tool so let me go to a symbol sprayer tool I am getting like this but you will get a warning to select the symbol so for that let's go to windows and select on symbols the shortcut is shift control and F11 so here there are nearly six uh, symbols that you can use so I'm gonna use this ribbon so I'm gonna create like this so as you can see a pattern is created so let me click on this and 
yeah so these shapes are created so if you hold on a same place the more denser the pattern will be so it is like a virus which spreads all over the world so it look like a virus so that's all so you can use pretty much same and you can also create a new symbol so i'm gonna show this how to create in a intermediate or the next so i'm gonna tell you how to create symbols in the next few lectures so yeah So let me move to the next uh, tool which is column graph tool. So yeah, you can drag like this all over the artboard or uh, your custom shape. A pop-up raises about the shape. So let me give five and each one. Two, three. So, like it is showing right over here, you can create graphs in Illustrator. But this is not that much useful because uh, we can create simply this in a, in Excel. So we don't use this graph tool in Illustrator. I don't know why Illustrator introduced it most of the designers don't use it because most of the designers don't want the statistics about a business but get to know it is there so the next thing is artboard tool so which is little bit more important so let me give you an example in this case the edge of this is perfectly matching with the with the edge of the rectangle so if you want to extend it you don't want to go to file new and create a new project with the extra radius or the extra size you can simply go to the artboard tool which is right over here and the shortcut for it is control and o sorry control and zero so the shortcut for it is shift and O so you can see the artboard is selected you can simply drag on this right over here and little bit like this so you can extend the size of the ad hardboard like this which is a pretty much important and uh, essential thing if you are working on on a larger projects so you don't need to create a new project so uh yeah so let me cancel it or delete it first and the next thing is slice tool so let me create a square with a circle inside it so i'm gonna keep it color to yellow And yeah so I'm gonna give slice tool so like this you can create slices of this thing so like how you can create these things so the next thing is hand tool hand tool is most essential thing so let me delete these things and let me go to hand tool hand tool is a pretty basic thing this is because uh, let me create a multiple things and uh, let me give you an activity what if you wa want to uh, move these three circles to another place? 
it is quite simple i will give you 5 seconds to do this task 1 2 3 4 5 so have you done it if done great if else if not perfect i am going to teach you how to do it so click and drag all the things and you can simply move it right over here so like this you can move it so but what if you have to move the whole perspective of this so uh let me show you the same example what if i want to view the full the three circles fully in that case hand tool plays a major role so let me uh click or grab the hand tool the shortcut for it is h and yeah so it is right over here and you can select like this and you can work here so the last and the final tool in the toolbar is the zoom tool zoom tool is a pretty much basic and essential thing which is used to zoom in and out the view so the shortcut for the zoom tool is is it and you can zoom it and you can zoom out so you can also use the a keyboard shortcut for zooming which is control and plus uh, to zoom and control and minus to zoom out so like this you can zoom in and zoom out so that's all with the tools panel congratulations you have completed the first beginner tutorial about tools so in the next lecture we are going to see about the palettes which are right over here so i'm going to teach you everything about palettes so meet you in the next lecture welcome to the most next important thing which is palettes so i am using palettes nearly 50 to 70% in my projects for more than 11 years so i'm going to teach you the important 10 palettes i am using in every projects i create so first i'm going to tell you what are the palettes i'm using right over here so i'll uh, basically frequent in this order i kept all my palettes so the first one is transparency the second will be stroke the third will be transform fifth the fourth will be color guide and the fifth will be gradient sixth will be artboards seventh will be swatches eighth will be symbols ninth will be pathfinder the tenth one will be align and the last one will be layers so i basically use layers in the next to the properties panel but now i am rightly in layers as a palette using layers as a palette so i am going to teach you every palette in illustrator so uh how can you get these palettes so the first thing is go to windows these are all the palettes that are in the illustrator but uh i have filtered the most important things that are in the illustrator that i used for my uh designing purpose so how to add an palette so uh let me give you an example of magic wand so uh click on the top of the magic wand and drag it and you can place it right over here or the more easier way is to i'm going to close this and i'm going to open it again and where is magic wand to yeah right it's right over here and i'm going to paste it right over here and you can also use it here here but i mostly use here which is far more comfortable because properties will have is most important in our uh, projects because it will determine the fill stroke 
and opacity and much much more so I need a bigger space for it but if you want if it is important for you you can add it or merge it with properties but I love to use it as palettes so the first thing is transparency so let me create a rectangle so with a stroke of two pixels or a four will be decent and yeah so let me click on it and let me go to transparency and yeah here you can determine the opacity of it like uh, 30 pixels yeah 30 percent or 50 percent but you can ask me that uh, why we can simply go it here uh, but uh, I'm using it for making a mask and sometimes I will be closing this if I need more space in my uh, project if there are more projects that I need to create and more work is there for me so I will close the properties tab and I will add it right over here into the palettes so I will use like this so uh, I will be using mostly as palettes so I'm using like the, the transparency in a, a separate panel so this is all about transparency and the next uh, thing is stroke so this is also used or same as the uh, stroke but this has far more options than here so let me give you an example you can simply uh, increase or decrease the uh, darkness of the uh, rectangle uh, edges or the stroke so you can decrease it or increase it that's all we can uh, pretty much this thing in this uh, appearance panel but what if we have a separate panel these are the options that are given by Adobe Illustrator to increase our workflow into 10x so let me show you what are these this is the weight so weight is basically the stroke points so let me give it to 10 which is exactly same here this is not the thing I'm going to talk about because you already knew that so I'm not going to uh, confuse or uh, extend this tutorial for few more hours so the next important thing is cap so let me zoom it a little bit more and yeah let me use the hand tool and make the uh, rectangle visible so let me use the cap and there is pretty much no changes but if we zoom it so yeah let me create this again so as I said before calves are not going to work right over here I'm gonna show you the best place to use caps but uh, the corners is going to work here which is a round corner so let me zoom it a little bit more uh, yeah so now you can see the clear difference between a normal corner and a round corner so you can also use a bevel joint which is a flat uh, thing which will take a few more minutes uh, to create like this so this tools can save you much 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 more time and save you a ton of time tons of time so so as I said before these are the options the aligning stroke is pretty much the same as I said before so let me zoom out okay so uh, yeah so these are the differences of this so this uh, align stroke to outside is far more uh, different different from these things so you can also create a dashed line so let me delete it this is not needed for this 
uh, example. So let me create a line. So let me uh, place it right over here and let me click on dashed line. So now you can see that the lines are dashed in this place. So you can also increase or decrease the size of the dash. So this means the number of dashes will be uh, increased, but the size of each uh, dash will be reduced. So let me keep it to 20. And uh, uh, the number of li uh, line will be small, but the size will be more. So, so yeah, this will increase the size of each dash and decrease the number of dashes so the next thing is arrow heads so this is quite important in creating uh okay so let me cancel it and now it is a little bit important when you are designing uh, a poster or a flyer and so on so this is arrow heads so let me click on the drop down menu and you can see that there are many arrows or uh, stripes which are right over here so you can select pretty much anything so i'm gonna select this which is unique and uh this is the end the end of the uh, arrow so i'm gonna choose something like this so yeah so the concept is same as i said before this these are the arrow heads and the other side is the arrow end so here you can easily rotate it and you can uh, take it as a post okay so yeah pretty much the same and the last thing which is quite important which is the profile so uh, let's click on the drop down menu and you can see there are plenty of options which is here so let me uh, click on the first one which gives a little bit thicker option in the center and when it's moving to the end points it is getting little bit thinner so uh, let me show you a use case where it is used so i'm gonna use something like uh no a uh, create okay so uh, so let me give a unique uh, font style if i have I am searching for a cursive handwriting which is uh, quite good but yeah so unfortunately I didn't get a uh, that much best fonts but yeah this is still good yeah so like this you can create a line or a design so you can pretty much do this same work using the width tool yeah so you can easily drag this and you can easily make it bigger so the same thing is achieved in two ways one is going to the width tool and increasing the width and the second two is going to stroke and selecting it so let me see what are the uh, other profiles that are in illustrator so okay uh, let me give on this yeah this is basically the things that you can do with a path on the path or using with tool so these are the things that are done using this so yeah 
So I don't want to explain this too detail because uh, we can achieve these goals using the with tool. So I'm not going to teach you about more of these and let me move to the next one which is transform. So let me create on uh, click on this and yeah here you can change the width. So let me change it to 300 from 271. So it is gradually increasing so let me give 500 and it is quite bigger so let me uh, change the y value to 500 so these are the directions that is positioned so let me place it 500 so these are based on the x and y axis and these are the width and the height so if you unlink it you can change it uh, so yeah so that's all with this transform tool the next tool is color guide color guide is um, pretty much important uh, in the palette section because it gives a quite a long or a useful thing so let me show you I'll show you why it is important so so yeah so i'm placing it right over here and i am gonna give this color this 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 sorry this this and the last one should be okay so yeah so this is the basic concept so let me move it and let me uh, create a same concept which is in this pattern so yeah like this you can create multiple colors or uh, basically many things using this color guide this will be very 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 useful when you are creating a business card flyer and uh, a poster for a business or a corporate company so yeah <clears throat> that's all with this color guides and the next is gradient gradient is the same thing that we uh, that, that i showed in the gradient tool so for uh, for the reference i'm gonna teach you again about this so let me click on linear gradient and let me click on some other colors which are quite useful Okay, so let me uh, select something like this. Let me change this color to something like pink. No. What if it is uh, right over here? Yeah, it is good. So, uh, the same thing that we achieved using the gradient tool is right over here. So, that is the basic concept of this. Or gradient tool we you can use some other uh, gradient type like there are radial gradient and also freeform gradient so let me show what are these so the radial gradient is started from the center of the uh, shape and to the outermost part of the shape so the freeform is little bit we can choose anywhere and you can choose the color in each places so that's how this tool work so okay okay so let me go to the next useful thing which is artboard so this is almost same to the tools that we saw in the artboard section so i'm not going to cover this the next thing is swatches swatches is same like color guys but 
if you uh, take a look at color guys it has a same colors which is from lightest to the darkest part but this swatches has all the colors but they don't have the different color guides so that is the important pros and cons of swatches of using swatches the next thing is symbols so this uh, i'm not using it right now because uh, i have added it to only for demonstration purpose so i'm going to remove this so the next thing is pathfinder tool this is the most important and most useful palette i have ever used so let me create a, a square with a color of this and another square not another circle with the color of thing like orange so i'm going to make it little bit smaller okay so i'm saying you that we have to merge these things we are not going to separate it as we did in the shape builder tool we are going to unite it so how we can do it you can easily achieve this task using the pathfinder tool so let's see how to do it so let me select both of these uh, shapes which i need to add and let me go right over here and click on unite so these two uh, shapes get merged and the circle's color gets to the squares color so let me select on this and let me unite it so this is the first use case of it so uh, in a real life project we are going to create like this so exactly big as this and let me join it so this is like uh this is exactly like a perfect circle but it should be a little bit bigger yeah so let me unite it and let me keep it right over here not here yeah okay so yeah the second thing is this option so let me show you an example uh let me take a circle again okay so let me change it color okay so let me select these two and uh click on this option so as you can see the magic happens here the object which is in the top is minus and object which is behind it is subtracted from the first one so let me show you a quick demonstration as i did before so yeah okay this is good so like this you can create so let me place it right over here and name these things so this is unite okay so let me uh, give this a color white this is just for reference purpose and uh, yeah this is minus front okay okay so the next thing is right over here the third one so so let me give it a color of uh, something like a uh, yellow okay so so let me keep it right over here okay so let me select both of this these and let me click on this so you will be probably wondering what happened here so let me go behind by control is it and now you can see the center portion where the first and the second shape intersects 
only remains the other parts will be deleted so that is happening right over here so let me give it a or green it can be a blue okay so let me cancel it and let me keep it right over here and uh, let me name it as intercept okay okay so the last and final one in the shape modes is the important one which most de designers love to work with so I need to be in the same shape so I copy it and paste it so yeah so let me select these two options and let me go to here and do it so this is a fantastic option and you will be probably wondering that uh, if you work with uh, royalty free images softwares you will find what logo it is exactly it is the logo of shutterstock and it is uh, basically created with this text with this option so so let me go right over here and so let me go right over here let me copy it well let me name it as extrude okay let me keep it right over here okay so these are the five shape modes the next is pathfinders so let me create a square so yeah let me change the color to blue and let me see what happens So yeah, so when I click divide, nothing happens. But if I right click on it and select ungroup, here where the magic happens. You can click on this and you can drag this, you can drag this and drag this. So by this way, you can create awesome logos. And when you master these things, you when you look at a logo you should and you can able to think what tool you can use to achieve this goal so this is the first one i'm gonna put it in the down so i'm gonna name it as divide okay okay so the next tool is yeah so yeah so let me click on this trim option let me ungroup it and yeah so this happens because uh, this will cut whatever it is behind the the top layer so this will basically cut it out so let me place it right over here and for reference i'm gonna move this okay so this is trim Okay, so uh, 
the next thing we are going to see is so yeah so now we are going to see this so let me select these things and let me go right over here so ungroup and still we can divide it but it is basically for grouping it okay so yeah that is pretty much the same so I'm not going to keep it because it is not too uh, tough to create so the next thing so I'm gonna uh, keep it in hello So yeah. So this is ultimately same as the old one which we see right over here, but it is little bit different. But it is as same as that, and yeah. So so let me create this and select these two, and yeah. Now you can see that only the outline of this is visible other than this nothing is visible so that's all with this tool so that's all basically with these tools uh, in the pathfinder so the important things are unite minus print intersect extrude and the next thing is divide and trim these are the important options that are used right over here so so let me move to the next palette that we are using in the illustrator so the next palette is nothing but align so this is a quite important tool uh, when you are working with large text or a design so let me name it as adobe illustrator okay so it is right over here and let me uh uh, click on the first option which is horizontally align left so as the name suggests the text so this aligns to the left horizontally left to the uh, artboard so it lies inside the artboard as I said before we can work it anywhere on the illustrator but this option is only to align in inside the artboard so the next thing is horizontally aligned center so as the name suggests it is going to align in center based on the mean position so what is the meaning of the mean position so i have set here i have typed over here so this will horizontally move and horizontally left and horizontally center it will all work in this only one line it will not move or it will not get into the center it is only will be in this line so the next thing is horizontally uh, line left so as i said it is only going to be there so the next thing is vertically aligned top so it is going to move from the mean place and it is going to the top and the next thing is vertically aligned center and the next thing is vertically aligned bottom so these are working with the top and to the bottom and but the horizontal is from the left to right and the next thing is distribute objects so vertically distribute objects so we have only one object so it is not going to work so if let me so yeah let me work with it and so it is all inside a same line so okay so let me keep it right over here with a equal distance
work here. So yeah, it basically divides the same area to all the the objects. So the next thing is vertically distribute center. So so this is basically means the space between the each objects will be equal and the last thing will be distribute bot so it is same as i said before so i don't have to explain it more retaily so the next thing is horizontally distribute lift so this is going to work as same as this so i don't want to waste my time and your time in this so the next thing is vertically distribute space so uh, i was wondering for a long time that all these have similarly same functions I don't know what, why they are doing like this because they are they have a lot of creators who are working with their software but they have to give some proper updates and give more importance for each options but these are similarly uh, they are almost similar so I don't know what to say okay so the next thing is magic wand so this is exactly same so but uh, as I said before we have gone to window and we have clicked on the magic wand but uh, it is right over here so as I said in the, the tools toolbar this is exactly same we are uh, sorting out for each uh, setting for stroke color stroke weight opacity and blending options so the next thing is layers layers are far more important because this will decide what and how the object should look in the artboard so if we uh, wrongly or accidentally arrange the layers of an object wrongly the design can go terribly wrong and it can be a great time consuming to create it again so uh, aligning the objects layer is very much important and let me tell you uh, how layers work in illustrator so let me create uh, this uh, shape and the next thing is this so yeah let me create a square next let me give it a different color okay so let me place it right over here okay so let me all select this so let me click on the drop down menu and you can see there are many objects so these are all the objects that we created just before so these are all the stuff that are messing up our work so let me move these things uh, so let me uh, keep it uh, somewhere okay so now our uh, layers panel is little bit more clear so I uh, like to keep my layers panel clean and neat this will give us more uh, efficient in work so okay so the first thing is the black rectangle so this is at the base the next thing we have created is the blue color rectangle and the next thing we created this particular square which is uh, pink color pink in color and the next thing is orange and the uh, it is something like a uh, red velvet cake so yeah as you can see uh, illustrator automatically arranges based on it so let's let me tell you how you can bring this black color to the top so let me right click on it and let me go to arrange and bring to front 
So now you can see black is in the front and the top layer is uh, occupied by the black color rectangle. That is the important thing. Okay. So they, these are the be best thing in the palette side. Okay. So in the next lecture onwards, we are going to cover the menus that are important uh, in Illustrator. So we are not going to cover all the panels, sorry, menus, which are not useful in our work. They are going to cover only specific things which are useful. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, these lectures. So if you like it and if you want to support me, kindly review this course. So it will uh, help me and encourage me to post more courses like this. So thank you. So let me move to the next palette that we are using in the Illustrator. So the next palette is nothing but Align. So this is a quite important tool uh, when you are working with large text or a design. So let me name it as Adobe Illustrator. Okay. So it is right over here and let me uh, uh, click on the first option which is horizontally align left. So as the name suggests the text So this aligns to the left, horizontally left to the uh, artboard. So it lies inside the artboard. As I said before, we can work it anywhere on the illustrator, but this option is only to align in, inside the artboard. So the next thing is horizontally aligned center. So as the name suggests, it is going to align in center based on the mean position. So what is the meaning of the mean position? So I have set here, I have typed over here. So this will horizontally move and horizontally left and horizontally center. It will all work in this only one line. It will not move or it will not get into the center. It is only will be in this line. So the next thing is horizontally uh, line left. So as I said, it is only going to be there. So the next thing is vertically aligned top so it is going to move from the mean place and it is going to the top and the next thing is vertically aligned center and the next thing is vertically aligned bottom so these are working with the top and to the bottom and but the horizontal is from the left to right and the next thing is distribute objects so vertically distribute objects. So we have only one object, so it is not going to work. So if let me, so yeah, let me work with it and so it is all inside a same line. So, okay. So let me keep it right over here with a equal distance okay so yeah it basically divides the same area to all the other objects so the next thing is vertically distribute center so so this is basically means the space between the each Objects will be equal and the last thing will be distribute bot So it is same as I said before so I don't have to explain it more retaily So the next thing is horizontally distribute left. So this is going to work as same as this So I don't want to waste My time and your time in this. So the next thing is vertically distribute space 
so uh, i was wondering for long time that all these have similarly same functions i don't know what do why they are doing like this because they are they have a lot of creators who are working with their software but they have to give some proper updates and give more importance for each options but these are similarly uh, they are almost similar so i don't know what to say okay so the next thing is magic wand so this is exactly same so but uh as i said before we have gone to window and we have clicked on the magic wand but uh it is right over here so as i said in the tools toolbar this is exactly same we are uh, sorting out for each uh, setting for stroke color stroke weight opacity and blending options so the next thing is layers layers are far more important because this will decide what and how the object should look in the artboard so if we uh, wrongly or accidentally arrange the layers of an object wrongly the design can go terribly wrong and it can be a great time consuming to create it again so uh, aligning the objects layer is very much important and let me tell you uh, how layers work in illustrator so let me create uh, this uh, shape and the next thing is this so yeah let me create a square next let me give it a different color okay so let me place it right over here okay so let me all select this so let me click on the drop down menu and you can see there are many objects so these are all the objects that we created just before so these are all the stuff that are messing up our work so let me move these things uh so let me uh, keep it uh, somewhere okay so now our uh, layers panel is little bit more clear so i uh, like to keep my layers panel clean and neat this will give us more uh, efficient in work so okay so the first thing is the black rectangle so this is at the base the next thing we have created is the blue color rectangle and the next thing we created this particular square which is a uh, pink color pink in color and the next thing is orange and the uh there's something like a uh, red velvet cake so yeah as you can see uh, illustrator automatically arranges based on it so let's let me tell you how you can bring this black color to the top so let me right click on it and let me go to arrange and bring to front so now you can see black is in the front and the top layer is uh, occupied by the black color rectangle that is a important thing okay so they these are the be best thing in the palette side okay so in the next lecture onwards we are going to cover the menus that are important uh in illustrator so we are not going to cover all the panels sorry menus which are not useful in our work they are going to cover only specific things which are useful okay so 
i hope you enjoyed this uh these lectures so if you like it and if you want to support me kindly review this course so it will uh, help me and encourage me to post more courses like this so thank you welcome to the next part of the adobe illustrator course so in this course we are going to see about the menus that are in the uh, adobe illustrator so i'm going to divide each lecture for each menu so uh, for example file for this lecture and edit for the next lecture object for the next lecture and uh, like this because it is little bit confusing so you can watch a specific uh, menu if you are doubtful in a specific thing so let's start with the first one which is new new is pretty much same as going to the create new object so let me create new so did you remember this pop up it is came in the first when we opened illustrator so this is pretty much the same i'm not going to talk about this but if you have a template or if you have a previous project or a template you can open it from here so i don't have any templates so i'm going to leave this blank so the next thing is open so if you have an image that need to be placed in this illustrator or if you want to import a uh, image you can use this option so let me give you an example so let me go to so let me uh click on this okay so as you can see uh, this penguin cute penguin image has been loaded so like this you can import uh, images from out okay the next thing let me uh, cancel it and the next thing is close so if you want to close this tab you can close this or if you want to close all the tab that are present in the adobe illustrator you can do this easily so the next thing is save so if you want to save this project you can pretty much do this and this is the name which we given when we started our lecture so this is the same thing and the save as if you want to save this uh, this is save and if you want to save it again you can go as save as and the next thing is save a copy so this is very much important because if you want to export it you uh, may need a reference type or if you want to send a project to your client you can pretty much send this reference copy or mostly the uh, reference copy will be in jpeg or in png format you can save this uh, image as a copy and you can give it to your client and they will check it and you can send them uh, ai format or adobe illustrator format and they can view it exactly but ai uh, format will consume little bit more space so this feature is introduced so the next thing is save as template we have seen here new from template so if you want to save this as a template you can save it and you can import it so this is the basic concept and the next is adobe stock adobe stock is a famous thing it is like a royalty free images website that is provided by adobe and it is not free it is paid so i don't use that much so i have paid the uh, subscription for one year before uh, no for the first time i bought it and after i don't like adobe stock that much because i'm taking most of my uh, reference images that is given by my client so i will use that uh, images that is given by my client i don't use much images uh, that is Uh, in the internet so i basically use all the things and the next thing is place it is basically like import but this will import in the same document so still confusing so let me clear you the problem 
So let me click on open and let me click on it. And this is opens it in a new tab. As you can see over here, this opens in a new tab. So what if we want to uh, place it in the same image? You can use this place option. This is a pretty much useful thing. So the next thing is export. Export as screen, export as and save for web. So export for screen. This is basically as a reference type. And the next thing is export as. Click on export as and you can save it and you can pretty much select any format which is right over here. So uh, let me cancel it. I'm gonna, not going to save it. And the next thing is scripts. Scripts are not so much important. So I'm going to leave this. These are not so much important. But this is pretty much important. Because now in the starting of the project, we have set it to RGB. What if we want to set it to CMYK? So you can come to file and you can select CMYK. So this project is specially made for CMYK or printing formats. So you can change it anytime, anywhere. Okay. The next thing is file info. You will get all the infos about the these uh, file. So that's all with this and exit. Exit is basic option if you want to exit uh, Adobe Illustrator fully. So that's all with this file menu. If you have any doubts, you can uh, ask me in the ask questions tab and uh, see you in the next lecture. Welcome to the next lecture of the ultimate Adobe Illustrator course. In this lecture, we are going to see about edit menu detailed. So let me type uh, something like uh, Adam Adobe is a uh, Adobe instructor. Okay. So yeah, it is should be in the top and yeah. So let me create an uh, Square, let me uh, and paste it. So, okay, let me leave it as it is. And the next thing is go to edit and let me cut. So, it is basically like a cutting and copy paste that we do in our day to day life. So, let me go to edit and we can paste it. The next thing is paste in print. So, so let me copy it. Let me paste in print. So uh, you doesn't see any uh, changes in the format. But if you go right over here, you can see this is pasted right over the uh, previous format. So. Uh, let me move it. At the same place, another square is pasted. So most of the designers use this because if something is went wrong in their design, they can easily remove this and they can use with the uh, main or the original file. So the next option, let me delete it. Let me click on it and let me uh, paste it back. It is basically as the paste in print but we don't use it much because we don't use virtual formats for uh, editing we use only duplicated formats to edit objects so it is not too much uh, about and uh, yeah so paste in place so it is same as the paste in print so i don't want to teach much about this let me delete it and the next thing is paste in all outputs so yeah so let me create multiple outputs in uh, illustrator so give me a minute and uh, let me create an artboard okay so let me uh, click on it and let me go to paste in all outputs as you can see, at the same place, all the 
squares are placed even a single inch can't be missed that much useful this is so this will be useful when you are printing uh, magazines because uh, in every page there should be a page number so in that time you can uh, use this option which is paste in all outboards and all the pages will get a page number so that's all with it and let me uh, let me delete it and yeah so the next option is find and replace so let me uh, click on uh, let me place audio and replace it with illustrator okay so let me uh, click find and let me click on replace as you can see uh, this work is done so now it is changed from Adam is a uh, Adobe Illustrator to Adam is a uh, Illustrator instructor so uh, this is the use of this particular option so the next thing is uh, spelling which is not going to work out in this because uh, most of the designers won't work with much in the uh, spelling check because they are going to work with uh, something like logos flyers and business cards they are not going to work with spelling or much uh, in words because they can do this work in same in Photoshop or even in Microsoft Word so they are not going to work in right over here so the next thing is edit colors so yeah these are not too important in the designing career so I'm going to leave this so these are not as useful as that and but this is the most important so uh, I will say you that these uh, if type tool is shortcut is T the zoom tool shortcut is Z and the rectangle tool shortcut is M a selection tool shortcut is V I will say these things but what if you get all the Adobe Illustrator's uh, shortcuts in one place yeah that is the most special thing about Illustrator Illustrator not only Illustrator all the Adobe app will give all the shortcuts in the particular app so let me click on keyboard shortcuts so these are all the shortcuts that are available in Adobe Illustrator so as I said before selection B direct selection A and magic command tool Y and laser tool Q and so on so that is the basic thing and the next thing is my settings import settings or export settings so you can set a custom uh, export and import settings that will useful that, is, that will be very much useful but until you are going to work in a same design or a same type of designs because one day you can uh, create a logo and another day you can create uh, something like flyers and the next day you will be creating business card in that case this won't be that much useful so next thing is preferences so these are all the preferences so in general these are quite useful but not that much so yeah these if you have time you can go through it and this user interface is quite important this is because you this will set the color of your illustrator so in the first version it is like this is fully will be in white and Adobe change to this color this color and now it is this so I love this color so I'm keeping it as it is and the canvas color should be white but this will be more useful because if all the places are white uh, we will be collapsed with what will be the outboard and what will be the other places so I will keep as match brightness and the next thing is share button so I will teach you about share button in the in the next next lectures but not now so yeah 
So let me go over here. Okay. So pretty much safe. So that's all with this edit menu. Meet you in the next lecture in objects menu. So thank you. Welcome to the next part or the next lecture of the ultimate Adobe Illustrator course. So click on uh, objects because now we are going to see about objects. So let me click on this square which we created in the last lecture. So let me give on transform and sorry transform and uh, you can rotate it based on the angles. So I'm going to give 65. So it is rotated based on the 65 degrees from the mean position. So the next thing is reflect. So it will reflect to the, it will give opposite reaction to the mean position. So the next thing is scale. So you can give 200% scale and let's see what happens. So it is multiplied the original size so so uh, let me undo it and let me show you the next thing which is sure so let me click on uh, 60 degrees so as you can see it uh, drags it over 90 degrees so yeah, that's all with this transform and the next thing is orange. So let me uh, uh, take multiple images. So so yeah. So it looked like this. So I'm gonna send this orange backward. So I'm gonna uh, arrange backward. So the blue came in front and the uh, orange came back to the blue, but not fully uh, back. So I'm gonna select this orange again and arrange send back. So it went to the last of the uh, all the three shapes so the next thing is bring print forward the fr uh, first thing is to bring forward and this uh, came forward of the yellow so you can't see much difference right over here so let me give it again so it came uh, to the front of yellow and the next thing is bring front. So it again came front. So that's all with this uh, arrange and align. So these are the things which we uh, already saw in the line uh, palette. So let me teach you again because uh, if someone skips the palettes, they will be able to learn this. So I'm gonna uh, align to horizontally align left so they all came to the center and from the mean position so they came to the yellows position so yeah line center so they came center and the next thing is align left so they are in the same position so I'm gonna go to right they are still because they are one behind them okay so the next thing is vertically aligned top so they came to the top of the orange and the blue so that is the thing so the next thing is aligned center so they came to the blues position which is in the center so let me select these things and let me go to align and bottom so this there is no difference because they all are in the same line but now there will be a difference so they all came to the 
Eldo's position. So that is the work of the align. So distribute is not that much important. So I'm going to leave that. The next thing is group. Group is little bit important because if you are working in a large project, you need to uh, join all of them. So you will not have much trouble because if you want to move one, all the things will be moved and you don't want to move uh, each one. So let me ungroup it. And I, if I want to place it right over here, you have to do this like this. So yeah, but we can also select these four things and K, uh, we can uh, take it right over here. But this is not professional work and it is not done by professionals. They will join the things together and we, they will send it right over here. So that is the important thing of join. So let me go to this and let me, the next thing is uh, lock. So if you are working with an image, you will probably face and trouble, uh, trouble, uh, trouble, uh, which is if you are uh, keeping uh, image as a reference, the reference image will move when you use other tools like pen tool, curvature tool and so on. So in that time, lock orientation will help and save you much time in creating the projects. So let me lock it by going to lock and selection. So this will not be moved. So that is the important thing. So the next thing is, let me unlock all. And the next thing is expand. Expand is important, but I will teach you in the advanced class. So the next thing is rasterize. So rasterize, I will teach you rasterize in the next few videos. So these are not much important. These are all the uh, advanced features in the Adobe Illustrator. So I, I will teach you uh, in the next lectures. So these are clipping masks. So they, these are very much advanced. So I'm going to leave it. So yeah. So you have seen these options in Illustrator. So, so from the next lecture, we are going to jump into the practical work that we are going to do in Adobe Illustrator, like creating an icon, creating a, a shape or creating a logo and creating a, a business card and working with pen tool and the curvature tool and building uh, shapes using shape builder too. So uh, from the next lecture, you have a lot of fun. So don't skip it. Thank you. Welcome to the ultimate Adobe Illustrator course. In this course, we are going to see how to create a paragraph text using Illustrator. This is going to be a very short video of creating a paragraph text. So go to type tool and click and drag where you want to create the text. So now the paragraph text has been generated and now you can type pretty much everything that you have to create. So Okay, like this, you can create a number of things in this paragraph tool. So you can also edit these things in the type menu. So that's all of this lecture. Meet you in the next lecture. Thank you. Guys, from this lecture, we are going to start a new series, which is uh, icon creation series. So in this series, we are going to create 10 simple icons, which will be very useful for your career. Okay. So let me open the first icon. So I'm going to file, open, 
and I'm gonna go to icon creation and I'm gonna first create the smartphone which is a quite easy thing so let me go here and paste it right over here let me make it a little bit bigger and both here as well as here so this is going to be a very simple task you can also easily do this so I'm gonna create this for the first thing we are going to create the rectangle which is at the outermost thing okay so let me make it a little bit big okay so let me make it a little bit okay it is too okay so this perfect even this is perfect okay so let me uh, make it black and now okay so let me make the stroke of three pixels okay the next thing is this notch okay this will be perfect enough so let me zoom it to make the corner little bit smoother okay so it is perfect and the next challenging thing the next easy thing is the screen okay so this is over okay so this will be perfect and let me fill it with uh, Okay. Okay. So let me uh, hold on. Shift. Okay. So this is perfect. And let me make this. So let me make this black. Okay, so that's all. So the next thing will be the white color area. Make this white as well as the stroke. But this will be too big, so I'm gonna make this thinner. Wow. So without a single change, it is right over there and yeah that's all so in this lecture we have completed this excellent and easy icon so if you have any doubts don't hesitate to ask me in the q and a section so that's all with this lecture meet in the next lecture thank you so guys in this lecture we are going to start creating the practical courses rather than staying in the theoretical classes so let me delete these things and let me import an image by going to file open and i'm gonna select this imac tracing so i'm gonna trace this uh, image using these tools in the toolbar so uh, let me start from the computer so the first thing we have to do is uh, select on pen tool. So let me zoom it to get a clear description. So yeah, let me click on here and click on the next point. And so basically I think so I don't need to use this. I'm going to use this because in the edge it will give much more precise and the best I'm gonna use this okay so you can cancel this as I said before click on the alt and you can shift uh, click on the anchor point so now the straight line will be created 
and yeah so we click over here and click on this point so yeah so so yeah let me little bit extend it and so a straight line from it and so click on the path and So let me bring it down. So let me bring it down. So yeah. So I will also do with the pen tool if you have some difficulties and doing with the curvature tool. So I always wanted to try with the difficult part first and the next part, the next. So we have a white fill. So let me go to the appearance and cancel this appearance. So yeah, I have to change it and let me give the stroke a little bit darker effect to get a precise visibility. So I have to create it. Okay. Let me select the direct selection tool for anchor point editing. Okay, this is much, much good. So, yeah, let me select on the pen tool. Let me go to the next end. And, yeah, so that's all. Let me add the nearly one point. And, yeah, this is pretty much the same. The next thing we have to do is Let me create a rectangle. Okay. So, yeah. So, the next thing is the circle. Let me give it a black color. So yeah, so I have did this, but uh, as I said before, uh, can you suggest a single thing to make this work far more easier? Exactly, the most time taken is in the outline of, of the uh, computer. So delete it and go to rectangle tool and create a rectangle. So now we are going to edit the edges by going right over here. Exactly. Fantastic. So it took it took us nearly less than a minute, but with using the curvature tool, it took us nearly more than two to three minutes. So, uh, I have wantedly did this because you have to get to know about how to use the tools simultaneously or instantly when you uh, see and design. So, 
for the Apple logo, I'm going to zoom this and uh, yeah so okay so let me go to the so this is not sufficient so let me leave it we will do in the last so let me go to the curvature tool and you can see an error that will raise right over here in the end of the project. Okay, it is going perfectly. Let me delete it. I don't need this, so. So, this outline makes us a little bit difficult to work with. So the simplest way to solve this issue is selecting all the things that we created now and go to edit. Not in edit, it is in objects, lock and selection. So now we can work with our design without any issues. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. We get a straight line. A straight line and yeah. Okay, it is uh, far more better. So yeah, the next thing is the next thing, and let me go to the rectangle tool and uh, let me create it and with a simple rounded corner. So yeah, let me increase the stroke weight and yeah. Let me create another rectangle. Okay, so this is going to be an easiest task, but after the few projects, it will become a little bit tougher. So yeah. Okay, the next thing is the circle. So the pretty much same and the next thing is going to be the next part which is completed and the next thing is this yeah this is good so the last thing is to create this a key like structure so let me uh, grab the pen tool and let me draw these things. Okay, so this is pretty much good. Okay, I have another idea to do this, so let me leave it alone and let me create a rounded rectangle rectangle first let me make it a little bit cornered and yeah, so let me create it and yeah, so the part should be a little bit thicker because it will be good for the visualization and yeah, 
so the last thing is the end okay okay this is perfect and let me uh, move this so this is good but not perfect so yeah let me move it to this place this is the thing which we created uh, yeah pretty much good and the only thing that we should edit is right over here so let me grab the direct selection tool and let me read it so the edge should be a little bit softer for me to for cloud things yeah so yeah this is very much good So this is little bit bigger. Okay. This is the thing which we created right now in Illustrator. So in the future lectures, we will see how to create uh, the logos, uh, the Apple logo which we uh, didn't create now. So let me go to Object and let me unlock all. So all the things are unlocked and now we can edit anything, pretty much everything. So, so that's all with this lecture. Meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello guys. Welcome to the second part of the Adobe Illustrator icon creation tutorial. So our second icon will be go to file, open and the search menu. So this is much more easier than this. So let me cancel this first and yeah. So let me place right over here first and copy it. So yes, okay. So let me create this. So let me place uh, exactly at the white area. Okay. So this is completed and now the next thing will be okay uh, but still we don't need this so I want zero or uh, okay zero stroke so I have to create a next circle This is perfect and let me uh, color it with black color and let me send it to backward and yeah there we go so let me delete it and let me select the rectangle tool and to make it okay right over here and yeah started looking great Wow. Okay, so that's all. So we have created this awesome logo, but the width is too high, so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So we have created this. So that's all with this lecture. Meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Hey guys, in the last lecture, we saw how to create this type of logo and let me delete it and import our new logo. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to create this home in Illustrator. So let me cancel the other tabs to make it more cleaner. And let me drag it and drop it okay so let me replicate it 
and okay so let me make it fast as you are thorough and you are so much experienced in this creation so but still it is little bit more tougher to create so let me show you how to create this so first head over to the rectangle tool and create a this type of rectangle and let me place it uh, right on the roof okay so let me create like this like this and so on so let me go to the selection tool rack selection tool and yeah so it is looking good okay so let me replicate it so let me reflect it transform reflect okay so let me take it back over here okay so let me select these two and let me uh, make the fill as black to make it perfect and let me create this rectangle and make it little bit as like this and the next thing is the easy thing which is creating the house okay so the help of the paint tool i'm creating these things and yeah let me drag it to create this type of thing and a straight thing so let me cancel the background okay this two and yeah okay so let me keep the color as black and let me unlock the layers so let me move the image right over there and the important thing that we should notice the edges of the house is little bit annoying so so let me do something for it so let me go to the direct selection tool and make the corners a little bit thinner okay okay so yeah so it is looking good okay so then next probability of doing this can be uh, creating two rectangles right over here okay so let me leave it right over here because it looks good and it almost looks perfect okay so with this i'm like to end this tutorial before that i have to keep it a little bit lower place okay so yeah a little bit bigger yeah so this is perfect so that's all with this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hi guys in the last lecture we saw how to create this icon so in this lecture we are going to see about the next icon and let me delete these two things and you open it and now we are going to the next step and create this vampire icon okay so okay let me paste it right over here and yeah so it looks good mm, yeah so let me start with the head
Okay, so let me make it a little bit curvy. Make it It's not perfect, so I'm gonna try it again. So, yeah, so let me delete it. The first thing is going to be the straight line. Perfect. So let me make the stroke to something like this. Only nine will be good. And okay. So let me lock this. And uh, so the next thing we probably will do is the ears. Okay, let me copy it and paste it and maybe reflect it. Reflect. Okay, so the next will be definitely the eyebrows. So after some time I will give the colors to it. Okay, so yes. Okay, so let me make it the mouth is the last thing. Okay. So now it is perfect and let me move it and see what is there. Okay, so I have to make it a little bit smoother and now it looks good and this too. Okay, so the last thing will be these two. Okay, so with the drag selection tool It's going to be like this and yeah. So the mouth is little bit bigger, so okay. The nose should be like this. Okay, it started looking good. So this is little bit sharper. So let me
so it is looking good and uh, yeah so let me keep the full color of this and yeah this is much good and let me increase the width of it and the uh, okay so let me make everything big So the thing which is missing is the nose. So let me lock the layers. And let me now try to do it. Or we can also do it like this by going to rectangle tool and creating a small thing and we can make it like this too okay so this is good and this is also unique so let me move it by my mouse because the size of the teeth is little bit larger sorry logo okay it is looking good but it is not perfect so let me make it a little bit thinner okay but the teeth size is varying I can't keep it at a proper way so but it's still good it's still looking good and yeah so the another week uh, way we can create the outer layer of the person is by using the rectangle tool so let me show you how to create that so let me go right over here to make a trace so yes okay so let me make it like this and this specific corner sorry this specific corner should be little bit more bigger and this too okay so like this also you can create it and this is probably an easy one for you to create and yeah okay so it is good let me move the image and yeah so okay it is good so that's all with this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome to our new icon creation series so this is the icon which we created and let me delete it first and let me put the third logo uh, let me do this because this is little bit complex but it is more easy okay so let me place it right over here okay so let me come over here and let me fill it with white color and the stroke should be black and yeah so the stroke should be incredibly high so it is good the first step is over and the next step will should be like this okay the stroke is just too high So let me send it backward. That's good. And yeah. Okay.
Okay, so. So it is a little bit complex thing to create, so. Okay. So there's even circles. So. But creating like this can be annoying, right? So this is too bored. So I'm going to introduce a new thing. OK, so the first thing we are going to see is to create a perfect circle. Uh, yeah, so let me make it at the size of the first circle. and. Uh, After creating it, let me give the full color of black and yeah, so let me keep at this place or I don't need black because both the shapes are black so let me keep some other color like this and we can see the difference, okay, so it is perfect. So the next circle should be at the shape like this, oh yeah. Yeah, so let me edit it. Okay. So let me edit it. So yeah, so it's good. Okay. So let me change the color of it to something like this. And yeah, there we go. And the next uh, circle should be in the shape of this. So let me create like this. So. So perfectly matches, match the size because this can play a major role in your icon. Okay. little bit bigger okay it's cool so let me keep a color which is in the color of this so yes okay so the next thing will be with this probably so let me copy it let me keep right over here and let me edit it. Okay. Looks great. Okay. So, let me change the color of it to something like this. And let me take it right over, over here. Okay. So it looks great and the next thing will be at this point, okay. Okay, it is good but it is not the best. Okay, now it is good. So let me keep the color of this like this and yeah okay so it's better and the next thing will be probably like this and yeah okay Let me keep it right over here and yeah. Yes, yeah. 
so we are at the edge okay so let me zoom in and see the things yeah it looks great so Place it at the center, and the color should be the color. And yeah, the last thing. Okay, again, can I zoom? And let me change it to the black selection tool. Yeah, the last circle. Okay, so let me come over here and let me keep it. Yeah, so this is an easy way, but there are more easy ways to create it. But there are some difficulties, and you have to learn some more features in Illustrator. So it is a little bit professional one. Okay, so that is the reason I didn't include in this tutorial okay so let me select all the green areas and let me change it to white thing like this yeah oops so i didn't select these two let me select the white region and let me keep the colors of it okay Okay, yeah. so it's great. And the last thing to create is the handle, which is the next thing to create. Okay, so let me create it first. Okay, so let me cancel the fill and it will be more easier. Let me delete it and let me draw it again. So let me increase it. Okay, so we have to raise it. So let me grab the razor tool. Or we can select the paintbrush tool. So right over here we can see the fill first and yeah it looks good and the first and final thing we have to do is the things which are right over here okay so So with the use use of scissors tool, I'm going to cut these things because these are a little bit annoying one. Okay, so I'm gonna unite them. And yeah. Now it looks great. Oh.
okay it came like this so the last and final thing will be the handle okay so let me create it so the only thing is we want only these two corners to be at a rounded radius we don't need these two to be in rounded radius so how to solve this problem it's very simple double click on an this curved or this rounded icon and hold on shift and you can now edit the corners yeah okay so let me select these things so yeah it is perfect now okay so yes I've created this and uh, yeah it's pretty much good and now let me cut it so let me paste it right over here and let me join it with it okay fine so we have completed this tutorial and in the next tutorial i will meet you with the next icon okay thank you hi guys welcome to our new icon creation series so this is the icon which we created and let me delete it first and let me put the third logo uh, let me do this because this is little bit complex but it is more easy okay so let me place it right over here okay so let me come over here and let me fill it with white color and the stroke should be black and yeah so the stroke should be incredibly high so it is good the first circle is over and the next circle should be like this okay the strokes is too high so let me send it backward it is good and yeah okay So it is a little bit complex thing to create so okay so it has even circles so but creating like this can be annoying right so this is too bored so I'm gonna introduce a new thing okay so the first thing you are going to see is to create a perfect circle uh, yeah so let me make it at the size of the first circle and uh, After creating it, let me give the full color of black and yeah, so let me keep at this place or I don't need black because both the shapes are black so let me keep some other color like this and we can see the difference, okay, so it is perfect. So the next circle should be at the shape like this, oh yeah. Yeah, so let me edit it. Okay. 
here. So let me edit that. So yeah, so it's good. Okay, so let me change the color of it to something like this. And yeah, there we go. And the next uh, circle should be in the shape of this. So let me create like this. So. So perfectly matches, match the size because this can play a major role in your icon. Okay. little bit bigger okay it's cool so let me keep a color which is in the color of this so yes okay so the next thing will be with this probably so let me copy it let me keep right over here and let me edit it. Okay. Looks great. Okay. So, let me change the color of it to something like this. And let me take it right over, over here. Okay. So it looks great and the next thing will be at this point, okay. Okay, it is good but it is not the best. Okay, now it is good. So let me keep the color of this like this and yeah okay so it is better and the next thing will be probably like this and yeah okay let me keep it right over here and yeah yes yeah so we are at the edge okay so let me zoom in and see the things yeah it looks great so place it at the center and the color should be the color and yeah the last thing Okay, again, can I zoom and let me change it to the drag selection tool. Yeah, the last circle. Okay. So let me come over here and let me keep it. Yeah. So this is an easy way but there are more easy ways to create it but there are some difficulties and you have to learn some more features in illustrator so it is a little bit professional one okay so that is the reason i didn't include in this tutorial okay so let me select all the green areas and let me change it to white like this yeah oops so it's like these two 
let me select the white region and let me keep the colors of it okay black okay so it's great and the last thing to create is the handle which is the next thing to create okay so let me create it first okay so let me cancel the fill and it will be more easier let me delete it and let me draw it again Okay, so let me increase it. Okay, so we have to raise it. So let me grab the razor tool. Or we can select the paintbrush tool. it right over here we can see the fill first and yeah it looks good and the first and final thing we have to do is the things which are right over here okay so So with the use use of scissors tool I'm going to cut these things because these are a little bit annoying one. Okay, so I'm gonna unite them and yeah. Now it looks great. Oh Okay, it came like this so the last and final thing will be the handle okay so let me create it so the only thing is we want only these two corners to be at a rounded radius we don't need these two to be in rounded radius so how to solve this problem it's very simple double click on an this curved or this rounded icon and hold on shift and you can now edit the corners yeah okay so let me select these things so yeah it is perfect now okay so yes I've created this and yeah it's pretty much good and now let me cut it so let me paste it right over here and let me join it okay fine so we have completed this tutorial and in the next tutorial i will meet you with the next icon okay thank you hi guys
welcome to our new icon creation series so this is the icon which we created and let me delete it first and let me put the third logo uh, let me do this because this is little bit complex but it is more easy okay so let me place it right over here okay so let me come over here and let me fill it with white color and the stroke should be black and yeah so the stroke should be incredibly high so it is good the first circle is over and the next circle should be like this Okay, the stroke is just too high. So let me send it backward. That's good. And yeah. Okay. So it is a little bit complex thing to create so okay so it has even circles so but creating like this can be annoying right so this is too bored so I'm gonna introduce a new thing okay so the first thing you are going to see is to create a perfect circle uh, yeah so let me make it at the size of the first circle and uh, hi guys welcome to our new lecture in this lecture we are going to see how to create icons in illustrator so in this lecture we are going to see how to make this this particular apparent okay so let me paste it right over here and also all right over here okay so let me uh, start doing the work so let me create this first but we can also use another way of creating the square and we can make it little bit thinner okay so okay so let me increase the so 10 percent and so the next thing will be the this cap make it a little bit bigger okay so it's good and the next thing will be like using the curvature tool so i'm gonna create this this and uh, alt plus the anchor point so let me create it Okay, so let me create this and yeah, okay okay so 
that's good and let me move it away and see let's see what are the mistakes we have done the first mistake is attaching it with the this tool okay so let me keep a distance from it and okay so the next thing will be probably the this thing so let me do it like this so let me move it wow so now it is perfect and probably we can also make a change but still it is good so let me also uh, say you another easy way to create the circle so let me okay sorry but still we can remove it and let me create these two things and let me create a line using it let me create a straight line and here too okay okay so up to this it is perfect and the next thing well let me select with this and the thing will be the stroke let me bend it a little bit and the next thing is a circle okay so let me keep it right over here and see how to create it so let me create a perfect circle okay so let me keep my stroke at 10 and the only issue with that is this area so let me grab the scissors tool and let me choose this this and let me delete the middle area of it perfect so let me also select this and with the help of direct selection tool sorry so double click on it and move it a little bit far away okay so the, uh, let me make it a little bit bended okay so now let me change this to this and let me move it away and let's see it okay the issue with that is right over here let me move it right over here so let's see what happens wow so this is perfect and okay so let me with the help of the curvature tool let me make this too okay So this is cool and let me make something like this so we didn't add the stroke so it is like this so yeah this looks amazing and let me copy this thing and let me paste it right over here and yeah so it looks like this let me send it arrange backward but still it looks like this so the for the solution for this is simply making it white color making the full white so here is an issue raised that is as we already said colors can be one light apply, uh, applied when the path is complete okay so let me select it and fill it with white color um, but still it has the thing okay 
so let me think what will be the solution for this okay so let me select it with white and move it to the other place but still it has it So the reason is we didn't use the paint bucket tool. So that is the reason for it. So let me uh, take the paint bucket tool. Let me go to advanced. And yeah. So let me select it and so let me select the white color and the problem will be solved right now okay so the problem is solved and the thing is right over here okay so the first problem is completed and this is where we want to replicate it okay so let me copy it and let me send it uh, right over here let me send it backward okay it is good looking good and and the only thing is that it should be placed a little bit low okay so we have created this type of thing and let me increase it okay now it's looking great so that's all with this lecture meet in the next lecture hey guys welcome to our last part of our icon series so the icon is a medieval knife okay so it is going to be a really fun project and you will learn a lot of things from this because it is little bit difficult as well as interesting part okay so let me start with the knife so first click second click and so i don't want to use this i would like to use the pen tool this 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 as well as this okay so up to this i want to stop so i can go right over there and let me stop it and let me take the fill color so i can add up to a 10 stroke and let me smoothen the edges okay so that is done and let me lock this layer first because this will be a great disturbance for us and the next thing will be the handle okay so handle can be created with the rectangle tool i think so so i think we can create this easily okay okay so let me make it a little bit thinner as well as okay so this is good and yeah let me grab the pen tool and let me make it okay so this is good 
the next thing the next thing the next thing okay so for this last handle I'm gonna use the rectangular tool okay so that look good and yeah so okay all the things are perfect now let me move it and it look great okay Yeah, so let me keep it to 10 okay so let me grab all the things Let me keep it to 10 and the last one will be like this and okay so let me click on over here let me click on to 10 let me move and see what this result the result is amazing and the last one let me lock these things which is a little bit interesting part which is the middle of the knife okay so let me use the pen tool let me create a straight line over here we are not going to make two lines we are going to make only the single line with the width of this and yeah there we go so the first thing is you taking the scissors and let me make it happen okay so let me delete it and as you can see a path is deleted so i don't want to delete it right over here i want right over here and right over here okay so it is deleted now and let me move it as you can see it is so sharp so let me make it a uh, smoother sh sharpen edges okay so okay so we have created it and the things are completed and let me copy it and let me make it some more differently like this so all the things are at the locked position so yeah let me copy it and paste it and let me make it at reflected reflect yeah so it is good and the thing which is the the main thing is this area is like this so let me grab the paint bucket tool and let me try to do with the help of swatches and yes yeah so let me create it with the white color So let me merge it and let me try it
Yeah, so everything is perfect now, but still it is a little bit confusing. So the thing which we can do is this, but mine is not probably working right now. So So, mine is not probably working right now, but yours will be working perfectly as I thought. So, that's all with this lecture. Meet in the next lecture. Welcome to the ultimate Adobe Illustrator lecture. In this lecture, we are going to create a animal in Illustrator. So, let me click open and select this dog image pen tool and the curvature tool okay so let me uh, click on shift so uh, click on shift and you can minimize it so yeah zoom it and now we are going to uh, create this dog so I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to pause this uh, tutorial and start creating ones which is yours so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten excellent so uh, click on the ellipse tool and click on shift and create a circle so yeah so yeah this is good and let me uh, add the stroke to it and this created and let me log this first because this will uh, make it more difficult for us to do it and yeah so the next thing we are going to do is yours so uh, let me log this circle to selection so yeah uh, let me select this tool and go over here and let's see what happens So yeah, it is not perfect. So yeah, this is perfect. And uh, yeah. So the little problem is there. Okay, this is perfect. So so let me copy it and paste it by Control C and Control V. Go to Object, Transform, Reflect, and okay. So we are going to add this the same thing, but we are going to rotate it. So let me reflect. So yeah. Let me go to direct selection tool and edit the Okay, so this is good and let me create a circle Let me fill it with black color. So 
So let me create a circle for this for his nose. Let me uh, fill it with non color. So it's great. Okay. So let me lock everything which is above. Lock selection. Okay. Perfect. To lock it. Selection. Okay. So. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So let me copy it and paste it. As we did before. So let me. Reflect. So now you can see that the edges are too sharp. So how to make it to uh, a little bit in a circle form? Yes, you're right. Go to stroke and corners should be like this. So now the corners are a little bit softer. So it will give a natural look. So yeah. So let me go to lock selection and let me grab the curvature tool and place it. Okay, superb. Okay, this is pretty much good and let me make it a little bit thinner. Okay, we have created these things. So let me grab the Curvature tool and so let me go right over here. So let me cancel it right over here and let me drag it. Yeah, it is good and. So click on each of the parts. So let me lock it first. So lock selection. So yeah. We are off we're done and let me make these things too. Okay.
Okay, this is a little bit good. And we have created the path to right over here. So that is a little bit decent. Let me copy it and transform reflect. Okay. So it is place an important role. Yeah. This is not working out good. So let me create a new path. So no. It is making out. Okay, stroke is good. So, the last and final thing is the tail. So, let me lock it. Selection and the last and final thing. So let me say that unlock all. So yeah, let me move this. Let's see how it looks. So yeah, this is a little bit good, but not it is perfect. Let me drag it, and the leg is too not good not good and yeah so okay so the last thing is the final thing so let me lock these things let me lock it lock selection so yeah starts from here to here okay it is good and so we have to make it perfect because let me unlock all okay it is connected so the last and final thing is the fingers of it so the finger is too too vast Yeah, this side is pretty much good, but we have to make it a little bit smoother. Yeah, so this is good. Okay. Okay. This is same as that. So this is perfect. Okay, so that's all with this lecture. Meet you in the next lecture. Thank you. Welcome to the complete Adobe Illustrator Ultimate course. So, you are in the intermediate section. So, congratulations, you have completed the beginner course. So, now we are going to create a logo 
in Adobe Illustrator. So now go to File, Open, and let's select this logo design. Click Open, and it opens in a new tab. So now click V for Selection Tool, and click on the logo, press Shift, and drag it. Okay. Great. So now use a pen tool to mask this up. So this is a pretty simple logo design that you are going to make. So yeah. This is little bit easy one finish it now so yes so as I said before increase the stroke and lock it so let me lock everything with the ant board so I'm gonna lock selection and lock selection. So I have locked it. So now let me grab the pen tool and make the selections. This is one thing. Yeah. So let me lock it. So Go right over here and connect it with the older path. So now let me lock it again. So again, grab the pen tool and here we want to add another text. Okay, so let me. These are the path we have already. So yeah. So let me complete it. So pretty much the same. So let me unlock all and move this image to the side. And let me see what I have not completed. So let me uh, create a new ad board, which is the duplicate of it. Sorry. So let me delete it and let me see it. So let me delete all the paths that I have created. So this is that much. So yes. Let me uh, keep it, but still I have to. Mm, come to know what are the things that I have not done. Lock selection and these things have done. This is also completed. This is completed. This is also completed. So let me unlock all. Okay, so these things doesn't have fill. So I'm gonna add the stroke to nearly 10. So we are going to complete the task now. So OK, 
Okay. So this is another path we created. And it is 10. Okay. So, yes, we have completed the task. And so let's see what are the things we can add to this logo. So we are not going to leave it as it is because we, ha we can add some colors to it. So, yes. Let me give the color like something like this. But the only issue with it these things select everything things are completed which is they should come up There is the issue raises. So let me give this color like this. And basically, we can edit these things. So, let me grab the pen tool and join it. So, that's all. So, we have created a fantastic logo with the color in Illustrator. So, that's all with this lecture. Meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Hello, guys. In this lecture, we are going to see how to create this awesome Twitter icon in Illustrator. So, now we are going to select on the ellipse tool. But before that, we are going to make this bird right over here. So, for that, grab the curvature tool and zoom it a little bit for little bit precise view and let's start creating the bird okay so click on alt and the anchor point to create a straight line and yeah so So let me uh, click over here and yes, okay. So yes. Okay, click and yeah, the design is going to end now. So,
let me keep it at, at 5 and let me grab the pen tool and before that let me lock it so yeah no it's not good let me grab the pen tool again and grab the anchor point tool and make it superb so this is perfect and so let me unlock all let me click on this and uh, let me go to anchor point tool and anchor point tool okay so this is good and let me uh, change the color of the stroke to black sorry white because this will have a clear description of it Fill can be little bit of this for better viewing angle. Yeah, this is good. And uh, so yes. So let me create a circle. So yes. Let me give it a color of blue this is not the exact blue so I'm gonna grab the dropper tool and place it right over here so we have got the exact same copy so go to objects arrange and go and click on send backward the shortcut is uh, control and the bracket control and this superb okay so this is perfect enough and let me change the color to white okay so this is perfect and uh, yeah so let me grab these things and uh, let me delete it and yes this is the twitter icon we have just created in illustrator so that's all with this lecture if you like my work kindly review this course and this will definitely encourage me to create more tutorials like this so meet in the next lecture thank you Hi guys, in this lecture, we are going to see how to create AdMob logo in Illustrator. So in the last lecture, we saw how to create Instagram logo and Twitter logo. In this lecture, we are going to see how to create an AdMob logo. So this is going to be a very interesting lecture because we are going to add shadows to this logo. So go to the rectangle tool and let me create a rectangle with the size of the curved space so let me increase the width a little bit and yeah it is good and yeah okay so let me bring it to this shape and this is quite good yeah this is perfect now 
and let me cancel the fill and the stroke to 1% and let me change this toolbar to advanced so I have some more options let me go to windows toolbar and advanced so uh, let me try with this tool uh, this okay so this is a free transform tool and let me try with that Okay, it is not that much working, so wow, the direct selection tool is perfectly working. So I have created using that, and let me make the duplicate of it and let me rotate it first. We can also go to objects and we can also reflect it. But I'm gonna use it this option. Okay, let me go to the direct selection tool and yeah. Little bit good. great and so that's all with it and the next thing we have to do is the circle so let me go to ellipse tool let me create a perfect circle yeah it exactly matches the same color and I have to edit the anchor points of this place Okay, this is looking decent. Uh, yeah, this is looking great. So, yeah. Oh, okay, this is great. Okay. Let me do something for it. Let me create a circle again. With the stroke of three. Okay. So let me add some shadows to it. So let me grab the let me grab the paint tool and yeah so before that let me lock these things because this will greatly affect our project so let me lock this image too so yeah let me grab the Curvature tool and let me make it something like this.
will be perfect. And something like this. Yeah. So let me give it a color of this. Yeah. So it should go a little bit back now. So backward. Yeah, it is good, looking great. But it is, in my point of view, it is a little bit dark. So I have to re resolve this issue before I complete this project. So let me unlock all and let me make it a full and a perfect circle. Yeah, this is good. And uh, even this, I have to make it some more decent. Yeah, this is good, but it is not perfect. Yeah. Okay, it is pretty much good. But, yeah. Looking good. Okay. So let me uh, grab this tool. Let me make it like a capsule. Completed. We have to create another another path of line. So let me go straight over here. And make this path a little bit brighter, and let me. Uh, grab the eyedropper tool and make it okay it started looking great and yeah to make it little bit this side because the stroke is getting affected by this act so yeah this now so so the only issue with that is let me say what is the issue that is uh, playing around here so let me unlock hall and I have to make it up to this only up to this this is because Hereafter, the green color effect starts coming. So, 
knowingly I have created this so this makes a large difference in the logo so I'm gonna create this and so yes okay so let me complete it with this this yeah so let me add the color of this so this is perfect enough and yeah next the green color path surprise so let me again grab the pen tool and let me create up to this a line and up to this the second line so yeah okay so let me complete it up to this and So let me make it a little bit decent so it shouldn't top of it and still I need to edit it so the shadows are making the biggest time click over here and so yes this is good so let me cancel all the strokes from here and remove this stroke too okay so let me make a comparison of the original logo and the now which we now created so yeah so let me delete the shadows which we created now this is the original logo uh, this is the logo which is generated or created by Google and this is the logo which we created now so so we have created this logo so thank you. hello guys in this lecture we are going to see about how to create Google logo in illustrator so in the last lecture we saw how to create how to create Instagram logo in illustrator so now we are going to see how to create Google logo so click on file click on open and now click on search click open so now copy it by control and C and come to our main project folder and paste it so place it at the center and zoom it by the zoom tool and now select the pen tool or the curvature tool for selection before that make this lock and now select the curvature tool and we can start our project so so yes
Okay. So this is great and let me drag it right over here and okay so let me give this color the color of the google logo okay it's perfect so let me log this too and the next thing is the orange part let me grab the curvature tool and okay so let me cancel the fill color So we are using this because when we end a curvature tool endpoint, it will be not perfect. So we are using pen tool at the end. Okay. So we have created these two paths. So let me lock it. The next thing is the green part. Uh, let me grab the curvature tool and as before let me do it so let me cancel the fill color and let me grab the paint tool okay so let me grab the eyedropper tool and yeah so let me lock it so here comes the difficulty part so let me grab this through this cancel it and These are the straight lines. We grab the pin tool and yeah. let me give the color of the blue. So, yes, we have completed with our drawing so let me cancel it first okay so let me go to objects and select unlock all these things should be copied and pasted here so Let me delete these things. So this is the logo that we created on Illustrator. So if you have any doubts, please ask me in the Q&A tab. And if you like this course, please review this course. This will definitely encourage me to make more tutorials like this so that welcome to the ultimate adobe illustrator course in this lecture we are going to see how to create instagram logo in illustrator but it is very easy but the one thing is difficult which is the gradient used in this image so I'm gonna say you 
how to create this logo. So let me create a new artboard. So let me go to the artboard tool. And let me create a new artboard. So I'm going to copy this and paste it right over here. And let me start creating this logo. So I'm going to select rectangle tool. And yeah. So let me uh, make it like this. And the fill should be none. And even the stroke should be none for this image and the only thing is I'm gonna keep it at 3 pixels this is because for the uh, reference for creating it so I'm gonna go to gradient tool and I'm gonna give okay so I'm gonna give on the first thing which is so I'm gonna go to color swatches I'm gonna select this so I'm gonna give points So let me place this Instagram icon in, inside this and I'm going to select this path and I'm going to select this. So for this uh, thing, I'm going to choose the dropper tool and select this area. So the next area is this and I'm going to grab the dropper tool and select this. And the next thing is this. I drop a tool this and the last one will be like this this so this is not exactly the same but it is pretty much the same okay so now we are done with the part of the gradient creation so next is the easy one that we are going to do so let me cancel this gradient or the stroke so I'm gonna draw a rectangle tool I'm gonna draw a square using the rectangle tool and I'm gonna make it super smooth and I'm going to make it really really big and I'm gonna cancel the inside effect and yeah there we go okay so let me draw a circle in the middle of the icon so the first thing and the last thing will be right over here yes so yes this is the logo which we created Within 5 minutes of time, we created world's most famous logo, which is Instagram's logo. So, in the next lecture, we are going to see how to create an another type of logo in the next lecture. So, see you in the next lecture. Hello guys, in this lecture, we are going to start our new series, which is creating posters for our, our business in illustrator so now we don't want these things we are going to create a new project so go to file and open and inside that you can see option called original foot poster so this is the poster which we are going to replicate now and which we are going to create by our own okay so so let me go to the artboard tool and let me so 
let me make the artwork a little bit thinner as well as a little bit bigger okay so this is the perfect size and let me uh, duplicate it and so this is going to be the sorry so this is going to be our workspace so I have two more images to import that are foot poster background and top and bottom okay so let me import these things okay so let me uh, take it to the original post okay so let me come out and let me hold on shift okay okay so let me uh, create something new let me cancel these things and let me open the this and let me do the scan okay so let me uh, zoom out and let me do this process again and let me send the background to the utmost last by going to object arrange and send back or you can also do like a uh, right click on that particular object and go to arrange and send back okay so this is perfect so we need some more images so that i will download and i will import it now so okay so now we need to import the okay so let me zoom it a little bit okay so let me uh, zoom out and the first thing we have to do is import the burger which is the main thing in the image and let me do it now okay so yes downloads and okay so it is a little bit big or even it's too big let me go right over here and paste it hold on shift and make it smaller and make to that exact size so yes i have to make it a little bit bigger okay okay so this is exactly good and i like to use rulers because the height has to be perfect and let me go to view and rulers show rulers so let me add the rulers exactly right over here as well as the bottom of the burger so the basic idea is that yeah now it is perfect so the first thing we have to do is create the top so i'm gonna use the rectangle tool cre to create the text effect which is puff uh, special and let me give it a color first it is uh, somewhat red so let me use the color picker tool uh, let me use it okay so this is perfect and the next thing is that special so let me uh, turn on the caps lock and i've created this special effect and we have to select some text or font so the thing which we can do is going to the properties panel and now we can choose something so i think so this is good and i'm gonna change the color to white okay this is pretty much good the next important thing is the burger so burger okay white color text and so let me make it to somewhat a different font size let me check it out uh, 
Oh, this is not good. So, yeah. So, this will be alright. And let me use something like I want something like italic, but it is not that much right. So, I'm using in another computer because uh, minus at so I'm using another computer to make these videos because that is only for my professional work so this video editing is so video recording is I'm taking in my personal laptop so yeah so I'm using some as some other fonts for my work so I didn't remember the name but I've add them to my favorites so I will use them so but I didn't remember the name so from the few lectures I will try to use the same fonts which I use for my professional work so yes, so let me type as today best deal okay so let me make it little bit smaller okay but uh, in my case it is too small okay so this is good so the next thing is the circle which is right out there so let me draw a perfect circle okay it's it looks amazing and the color should be like this and let me copy the text and paste it and rename it to save up to okay so let me make it like this okay so I have to add some percentage symbol so let me add some 50% and yeah so yes okay it is looking great so the next thing we have to add is something like different so let me search something for different so somewhat like Okay, this. So let me check it out. Okay, so this is good. And let me choose this. Okay, so. So let me search for four. Okay, so four. For information, okay. So let me type the number somewhat like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay. So after some time, I will download the icon. So of the phone, so which we will work the number it. So selected ingredients, and let me add some tab. And, and uh, delicious, delicious. Oh, oops. Okay. Delicious taste. Okay. So let me add something like this. Started looking good. Okay. So it's too bold. 
but it's still okay so let me move the rulers and let me delete the okay okay so okay so where is the original this is the thing which we created and yeah so let me make it a little bit smaller okay so that's all so within a minute i'm gonna download the phone icon and add it over here so so finally i have downloaded it and let me open it it is in the a file and let me search yeah it is right over here and let me move it to the foot poster so yes okay so so let me keep it right over here okay so this looks good and yeah that's it guys so i've created this thing for you and if you like my work don't forget to share your review about this course and that will increase me to create more course, courses for you so that's all of this tutorial see you in the next lecture thank you hi guys in this lecture i'm gonna do this particular poster and which i said in the last lecture if you can do that, perfect. If not, it's okay. We are, we are going to do this together. Okay. So, the first thing we have to do is the background. So, the thing which is first import, import the french fries and the background. Let me open it. And the first thing will be the french fries. So, uh... Yeah, it is right over here and let me copy it and paste it right over here and let me make it a little bit smaller which will set okay so let me make it a little bit bigger sorry a little bit bigger for the artboard Okay, so it is good. The next thing you can do is creating the background. So that is the important thing that we should do. So let me create a um, use a pen to curvature pen tool and let me create this up. So before that, let me copy it and keep it right over here. To make a perfect selection okay so let me create this to this and let me make it a, a little bit curve like structure and so it don't need to be perfect so so yes yeah there you go it started looking good okay so after this click on alt and the anchor point create a straight line and here to here again and again okay so it's going to end now okay so let me keep the color of it to this exact color but I don't want to be like this now so let me make the stroke a little bit stronger okay so in order to create this so the next thing we can achieve with this it is the this side the other side of it so let me uh, make a rough selection of it with this we can create with only the 
uh, pen tool itself so the first two things will be with the pen tool and yeah so let me create like this and don't worry this is not going to be in the front it is going to be the back so don't worry so the first thing is the so let me add the stroke to it okay so mm, yeah so the next important thing that we can add is the 50 percentage off so that is the important thing because we didn't see like this so i'm gonna give it to somewhat like uh 15 or 6 18 will be right okay but the edges are not so good so yeah so so let me try with the star tool in which we can create a superb things so the edge should be nearly like somewhat like 30 the next should be 25 and the next should be nearly 15 wow so it is perfect enough okay so the shape is little bit as it is okay it's okay so it is perfect okay so let me keep the eyedropper tool and let me create a text which says 50 percentage okay so this is good and the next thing will be probably the text so let me uh, make this first to the color of this let me select this first and let me send it backward send backward and okay 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 so let me select this not this uh this probably this the next thing is going to be coloring this okay so let me take this and keep this okay so let's get the next thing is removing the important one which is the background so let me delete it and let me select the french fries to come front okay let me keep it right over here no okay let me keep it right over here and yeah so it's great and the last thing will be the things which is right over here okay i want to increase the anchor point okay excellent okay so it started looking amazing and uh yeah, the next important thing is to the these grids which is right over here let me import that too so it will be like something like this yeah exactly so let me copy it and paste it okay so let me make it a little bit smaller okay it is good and let me make it a little bit smaller because it is too big so yeah so this is good and uh, 
yeah everything looks good and the last thing will be the french fries bowl text Right, so let me make some gaps. Okay, that is good. And the text looks very good. So let me select something like a bold text. So, yes, it is good. And let me select the color okay so yes so let me take the eyedropper tool and let me make it okay it is done it's almost done and the space between each line is too much right so I have to decrease it and inside the characters panel you can see this option so you can decrease it to decrease the line height so the last thing will be the crunchy and tasty crunchy and tasty okay okay superb um I have to add some text over here. Yeah, this looks good. And the color should be as same as that. Okay. It's good. And yeah. So it is good. And let me change the color of the text. Okay, so so we have to do something right now. Yeah, let me select these two things. Let me select the off. Okay, so let me select some different fonts if possible. So this is good and let me change the color to white and I have to change the 50 person color to okay so this is the poster which we created so the only thing that we should edit is this like this and okay okay so let me leave it and yeah so that's all we have created this amazing thing and yeah okay so that's all with this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you Hello guys, in this lecture onwards, we are going to create NFTs which are non-fungible tokens which you can create with illustrators. So I have taken 5 examples of, of NFTs. So I am gonna use these NFTs and show you how to create these and how the creator created it. So, so I have given the 5 NFTs in the projects folder so let me go to file open and inside the illustrator master class here will be the end results for all the projects I create okay so let me take this first doodle NFT so thank you doodle for creating it and 
have taken this image from OpenSea, which is the largest and the most trustable NFT platform. So let me open it. Okay. So let me uh, take it. So I'm going to say you a trick. So how to move this here from here to here. So you uh, you don't want to copy it by control C and going there and control V or pasting it. So you can simply uh, grab the selection tool and you can click on the image and you can drag it. Drag, 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 drag. Yeah. So after going to the project, you can come here and paste it. So, wow. We have taken this from here to here. So that is a trick I need to say to you, but we are going to use it right over here. So let me resize it. So if you want to resize it perfectly at this square shape, or if you do it like this, it will come like this. So I don't want and illustrators don't want it. So if you want a perfect and uh, clear illustration. So for that, hold on shift and resize it. So now the image will be evenly resized from all the sides. Okay, so let me place it with the correct. Okay, so it is placed over the ad board. Okay, so I'm going to use this now. Okay, so let me drag it a little bit because, okay. Okay, so this is perfect. Let me create this uh, cute person now. So let me grab on the curvature tool. And before that, I have to lock this. And we don't want to go to objects and lock every time. You can simply go here and you can, uh, after the eye icon in the layers panel, next will be the toggle lock. So now the image is locked and we don't want to go to objects and lock. Okay. So let me grab on the curvature tool and let me create a new layer for the layer. So let me say how to create a new layer. Okay. In the layers panel at the bottom, you can see a plus icon. Click, uh, click on that and the top, you can see a layer. So let me rename this. By double clicking on the name, I'm gonna uh, name it as original uh, image. Okay, so this I'm going to name it as my drawing. Okay, so let me draw on this. So let me grab the curvature tool and let me start drawing from right over here. So let me place it right over here. Let me grab right over here and Okay, so let me cancel the fill Okay Let me increase the stroke to nearly seven so let me view it yeah it is perfect and so it is not exactly perfect so okay now it is perfect okay so let me lock it first by going to object and lock so by for this we have to do this because we don't have separate layer for this but still we can lock it by clicking on the arrow mark in our drawing and you can lock it. Okay. So now this layer is locked, but still we have the path. Beautiful. Let me grab the curvature tool again and let me draw it. Okay. This is perfect. And Okay, let me drag it. Yeah, superb. Okay, up to this, this layer comes over here. So let me log this again. 
and these are all the okay so before that I have to make some corrections over here okay uh, yeah. okay this is good and let me make the corners of it a little bit smoother by going to the palettes of stroke and let me make it corners a little bit smoother yeah that's all okay so let me grab the curvature tool again so for this project we are totally going to use curvature tool because the creator have used this and it will be more professional for it let me edit it yeah so this is perfect and let me create another for this with stripe okay so so let me make this a little bit smoother make this cap a little bit smoother and yeah these are perfect and let me select these all so to select multiple things uh, click on an path first and click uh, by holding shift select the next one and shift again okay so let me log all the things okay so this is good and let me grab the curvature tool okay okay so this is perfect so we have created this and yeah let me leave it because each section have each thing so okay this is perfect but before that I have to make some corrections over here so let me go to the direct selection tool and let me make it a little bit smoother okay so this is good let me make it a little bit smoother the edges and okay so let me uh, hide this original image and see how much we have created yeah this is cool and this is perfect because we don't have any uh, ups and downs in the image we have a little bit smoother image okay so let me uh, come to the original position and let me lock it and so let me go to the curvature tool and start drawing this yeah I forget about this okay so this is perfect and yeah so let me grab the pin a curvature tool and okay so let me drag it okay so let me uh, uh, click on alt and to cut the curve okay this is perfect okay so let me go right over here and okay So let me make it a little bit. Okay, so let me click on Alt and so. Wow, so this is making a little bit, making the illustration a little bit bad. So I've made it right. So next thing is this and so you can notice that if I go and join this the illustration becomes bad so this create a curved line which is right over here and I don't want to do that 
so I have to create a straight line for that click on alt and this creates a straight line so that's how you can create and let me see it so it is perfect enough and let me log this can log these two layers and let me hide the original image okay this is perfect enough okay so let me create the mouth of the doodle and let me make it in a second so creating again and again with pen tool and the curvature tool will make you little bit uh, bored but these are the main tools that all the designers use in their project so it is essential to learn these things so that is the only reason I am taking it again and again so let me join it first okay so this is good and let with the help of direct selection tool I have to make it little bit good okay so this is good so let me lock it again and let me make the tongue of it okay so this is good and let me complete it so because when we color it many issues may arise so this may make our project a little bit difficult so so for this tongue I'm gonna make the stroke little bit lower let me make it 5 let me select it and make it a bit 5 yeah 5 will be perfect and this area is little bit not good but we will make it right after the thing okay so we have created these thing and the next important thing is the eyes the doodle okay okay this is perfect and the next thing will be the shirt so the last thing will be the shirt okay click 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 okay let me make this a 7 okay so let me make this line first yeah Okay, so let me lock it. It didn't lock many things, so let me lock all the things. Okay, so let me grab the curvature tool again and let me make this too. Let me see if we can create this. So this is good and let me make it little bit in front okay so let me cancel it and let me log this too so the next thing will be the last thing okay so I think so most of the things we have created yeah perfect so we have created lots of things so the last thing remaining will be this
Okay, this is completed and Okay, this is completed and let me log this layer too and let me see what happens yeah after a long time we have created this and yeah there is no much difference between them but this is perfect enough so let me make these things a little bit smoother because the edges are not good and yeah so now it is good and all the let me check all the edges are smooth yeah correct 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 wow wow so everything is perfect and let me move on to the next section which is a coloring of each things so let me unlock these things okay so I have to color these things and let me select all the things which are present right over here so let me add the color so I think there will be an issue in this so as you can see the illustration is not perfect and we have to do something for this so can you guess the result or the solution for this exactly we have to complete this thing so let me lock the ears of it first eight layers okay up to this is enough and let me mm, Let me connect it first and Okay, so this is good and let me select these things and see what is the result Let me unlock these things and select this by multiple images. Shift. Yeah. So let me see what is the result. But still, we have some issues with it. So let me clear these things in a minute. And for that, let me bring it first bring it friend let's see what is the result the same result is even now and so the issue with it is basically the thing which is a mistake so let me grab the curvature tool and let me before that let me make this make these things lock so let me grab the curvature tool and yeah join these things okay so let me join it first and let me see what is the result given by the live paint bucket tool so uh, we don't want to use the color option from the properties menu because that will not give a fulfilled option so I'm going to introduce a new thing which is live paint bucket tool so click on the live paint bucket tool it will be uh, probably under the shape builder tool if you use the latest version of Adobe Illustrator so the shortcut for it is K and you can see it has a paint bucket tool option and there are some st strike in top of the cursor 
three stripes. So what is the reason for it? That means we didn't select any colors for our illustration. So how to fix that? Go to the swatches menu and click on double click on the fill. So select some colors. I'm going to select this maybe and yeah. Now if you click a pop-up raises that you have to merge the layers. So click on OK and right over here you can see option called merge live paint. So let me click on it and it has merged and now you can see a red line comes over it. So let me click on it and boom the color is filled. So the next thing is this. Click on it and yeah so the illustration is perfect and for the next thing I'm gonna give something like this I'm gonna fill it with this so it doesn't match us with it but it's good and the next thing is the face so like we did so we have to merge all the layers which we created at the first so let me uh, hold shift and click each of them and the thing is we didn't connect this so let me make a line from here to here so we don't want it to be a visible line we need an invisible line so for that let me cancel the stroke so let me cancel the stroke first before that I don't want to merge these things so let me cancel it first and let me lock it so let me lock these things Let me create a line over here. So let me keep it right over here and let me close it and let me cancel the fill. So it is independent now and let me increase the length of it little bit over it and yeah there we go. So, so we need a complete circle. So it is now complete and yeah, we have to color it first and let me go to the paint bucket tool. And so now still the swatches are not selected. So let me go to swatches, double click on fill and let me choose some colors for the skin like this and yeah so the thing is it is covering the face too so let me click on these things too so so let me do it again and see what is the result now so yeah so now it is perfect and still we have some issues with it that the this thing is not perfect not at all perfect so let me grab the direct selection tool and let me before that we have to add a anchor point let me add an anchor point right over here and again here so let me go to the direct selection tool and let me make it so we have to add some more anchor points so let me see what is the result. So yes. So let me delete the line which we created. Oh.
So let me go to the curvature tool and let me lock this layer first because this is creating a lot of things. So let me lock it and let me create a straight line. straight line straight line over here and let me make it perfect I've selected these things and let's see what is the result now so again have to select some colors it's like this but still yeah it is working now and yeah the color is pretty much good and it is better than the older one but there are some disadvantages in it because the this thing is not total perfect so let me make it double click on it and let me edit the things and yeah now it's perfect so there are no issues but I have to change the color because I kept it just for the testing purpose so now the illustration is coming perfect so we have to give a perfect color so let me uh, create a new things so let me create a new artboard first by going to the artboard tool So it's right over here and let me create a new artboard and let me uh, keep the, the image right over here and it is easy for us to uh, get the color codes of it. So let me first select these things which is linked together and let me get the first thing and let me go to swatches let me select a color with the thing okay so let me keep it aside and let me grab the eyedropper tool and keep it right over here but it is not perfect and let me copy the color code it's right over here and let me undo it okay so let me go to swatches and let me keep it right over here let me grab this and yeah so it is perfect so I have to change the color of it but this is perfect so the next thing is the head so I want to give the color of it and so cancel it and go to the this I drop a tool and copy this and let me give undo and let me paste this color code yeah this is good and this is little bit good so I have to edit some changes because there are some things that we need to edit like the hand of the person is not good and the edges are not so good so let me select this and let me ungroup it first so live paint bucket tool which is right over here and let me take it out of it let me select multiple images and let me take it out so let me see what it happens so it is not good and uh, so 
let me select it and give the paint bucket tool a color of the pink so let me grab the dropper tool and keep it right over here and let me copy the color code of it and okay so let me undo it this color so the colors are perfect and the next thing is this thing so let me select the mouth first which is this so i have to select something yeah this is the mouth so let me uh before that let me copy the color code of it copy okay so i have to give the uh like this mouth and go to the eye this tool and let me place it over here okay but this is the this is not the color which we used let me paste it and this is the color so it is pretty much the same as it is the original color and let me select the first thing which is the hair so let me see what it is so hair is right over here so let me ungroup it or unlock it and so let me copy the color code of it first let me copy the color code and yeah so yes so let me grab it live open bucket tool and let me paste the color code so yes so it is little bit perfect and we have to make some changes so let me uh, change the path of it and before that let me take it right over here and see what are the changes i need to make so the edges are not perfect let me move it so still it is not quite perfect thing but it is still good so okay so now the edges are smooth and the next thing is this place so it is not professional so let me cancel it and let me select it change it little bit and yeah so it is perfect and the last thing to do is the mouth of it so so let me select the mouth alone which is this yeah so bef before that i have to select the tongue of it so this is the place which is getting harder so let me keep it and okay so it is perfect so the last thing is this area so it is two blend day so let me select the mouth and go to the drag selection tool but it's still not good and let me add a an anchor point right over here and let me try to do
so but still it is good so i'm gonna end this thing because it, is, it has taken too long of time so i'm gonna stop this and let me uh take you through something and in the next lecture we are going to create the background of it which is a amazing gradient which is amazing and so this is the nft which we created right over now within 30 minutes of time so that's all with this lecture meet in the next lecture Thank hi guys in this lecture as i said before we are going to create the linear gradient which is in this nft okay so for that let me create a square first so let me hold on shift and drag to create a perfect square okay so let me click on gradient which is right over here and let me cl click on this and we don't i don't want to be like this so i have to move this so okay so let me uh, select the colors of it and let me go to aeropa tool and select the edge color and this edge color should be this edge color is right over here yes but it is not still perfect yeah now it is great and so we have to change the shape to a horizontal to a cross shape so let me change it to 45 degrees so let me keep it like this but i want it to be uh, 90 degrees but yeah it is good still good but i have to keep it i think so i have to keep it in minus 90 what happens wow this is exactly as it so this is the original so let me type original so let me change the color of it and to white so this is ours okay so it is the difference between this and this so comment down below which is best and which is superb okay so if you like this tutorial please review this course and this will encourage me to create more illustrations and tutorials like this so that's all with this lecture meet you in the next lecture and create a new nft so thank you so welcome to the ultimate adobe illustrator course that will take you from zero to hero and in this lecture we are going to create this ultimate doodle nft which is taken from them in OpenSea. so thank you OpenSea and doodle to allow us to use this match so let me uh keep it right over here and yeah so this is the original image so i'm gonna put this in this layer and yes so these are the text so let me keep it out of it so okay let me delete this and original images should be right out there okay so we delete this path and so these two text texts are right over here and uh, yeah so let me start from the shirt first let me grab the curvature tool and me place it right over here i don't want to waste time because last lecture has taken a lot of time so 
so let me keep it right over here and this is good so let me copy it and try to uh, add some stroke and let me keep it okay so let me uh, object arrange or transform reflect so let me see how it looks so no not good because the sizes are different so we can't do anything so let me go to the stroke and let me use the cap as round cap and okay so now it will be something cool and yeah so let me uh, lock it lock this path and yes so let me create the next curve which is right over here okay yeah, this is good and from this lecture we are going to complete the face so we are not going to leave anywhere as it is taking a ton of time So let me keep it right over here. So the school and next thing. Okay, so this is good. And let me increase the weight of it. So, so, so let me create this. So let me lock it. everything that we created now let's see what happens so this is right over here and let me start creating it so let me lock it and let me create this So before that, let me grab it and come to the end and so yes. So we don't want to be straight because it is out of the coverage of the artboard. So let me make it a little bit perfect because this is not too good and let me try to make it straight okay so this is cool and yeah so let me lock it this too and so this is good so we have created the first part of the shirt and the next thing will be this these are the easiest part and let me grab the curve as a tool. So, let me make it a little bit curve. So, so it is so this path. So, let me lock it and continue our drawing so yeah okay this is good and 
so we'll also make some changes in the future so so the concepts are same but there are some difficulties when creating the new new things so let me log the two original images so so yes so let me unlock these things and let me copy it to the next side not okay okay so the next thing is we have created these things so yes let me create the face now which is the more complicated place okay so let me create and again the same thing for the face okay so so let me end it and okay so let me log this to let me create a circle so let me create these things it's not looking good so this is perfect and after that after uh, completing it we will add the stroke color because we didn't add for all of them so okay so there are lot of layers that we are working right now but these are not lot of layers because if you go to a real project there will be hundreds and even thousands of layers in the uh, project so i have created a project which is nearly 3537 lines i think so so that is the highest record i've created and that is in a uh, a uh, illustration of a uh, of a nature of nature and i will show you the image in the last at last of the course so let me create this first so let me create the straight line okay so everything is perfect now and we have to make the eyes and nose sorry the mouth of the person not exactly the person he is in a uh, doodle so let me add this to him and yeah this is good and let me grab the curvature tool okay so let me copy the circle and paste it right over here okay the circle is perfect and let me keep it right over here and this too so exactly our project is completed and there are some 
things that we should fix so before that let me add the stroke and let me unlock all the layers to edit these things I have to add the stroke for all of them and yeah four points so let me remove it and the thing which we can't see is these face uh, okay so yeah so let me give the stroke to these let me select these things okay. so yes okay the corners are perfect and the last thing will be this okay let me move it a little bit further and let me change the cap and the, these things so let me add the fill to black even this the fill should be black okay oh, this is perfect and there are no issues except this place so we will clear it after the coloring part gets over so let me select all the things which is right over here and this okay so let me try to color these things and uh, so, there are no, so there are no colors to complete so let me go to swatches and let me select a color which is exactly in this image so before that I, let me uncheck it and let me get the color code of it and the color code is this and let me go right over here and let me select these things so let me go right over here and let me paste the color code and okay so this is perfect and after some time we will change the color of this to white so let me leave it first and let me complete the other parts of the face so let me change this to a little bit smoother cap okay okay so let me select these faces and i think so there will be some errors showing in the place so before that we have to get the color code of it mm, yeah okay so let me copy it let me go right over here so before that i have to give it a rounded cap so these things have forgot okay so let me give it a color of it and let me go to swatches there are some errors so so we have created up to this so let me start the coloring part so let me color these uh, things first so let me color with this color so let me grab the arrow tool and keep this and let me go right over here and copy the uh, xx code and so so let me keep my cursor on it and let me go to the swatches and paste this color so okay so let me go to this and let me paste this color so don't worry this will come in front so otherwise we can send this back back ok 
okay so so let me use these things and let me create this okay so this is perfect and let me uh, get this color code robot tool and this is a repeatable process so let me undo and let me go right over here okay so this is colored with this color so i don't want to be like this so let me go to properties and let me keep the fill color to black sorry so let me select this alone so let me black okay so the only thing is this let me send this to black and let me bring it front by going to object arrange and front so okay this is perfect and the last thing is we have to make this corners a little bit smoother to make it good okay so the last thing will be the gradient which is a quite difficult part for us because it is a linear and a random gradient so so let me uh, try to do this so as i said before first create a square by creating a perfect circle or square sorry so let me cancel the stroke first and let me uh, keep this to white first and let me go to objects arrange and send back okay the first step is over and let me click on gradient tool and let me click on this okay so the first thing was going to select the first color that we are going to use go to eyedropper tool and the first color and let me i want to choose the next color so this is perfect and we have to add another thing so this is perfect and the next color should be right over here and let me select the color code of it and by going right over here the so next color should be here and right over here and so this is not that much professional but it is nearly the ending point so so now it is good and let me change it to minus 90 not minus 90 it should be at this and but So this is perfect so so let me cancel it and let me go select the selection tool and let me select these three dots right over here and let me go to properties panel and change the fill color to black as we want it as a black color so let me come out and let me select this and now what we are going to do is something let me try to change the color of it so uh, so it's not coming that good so let me do like this let me click on this so it's not that much working properly so let me try to do something so let me go to the live selection live paint bucket tool and let me select some color in the swatches let me click on white so yeah so that is perfect and we have successfully created the same thing that is in your right side so let me slice it so so let me try to delete the extra thing so 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 let me leave it for now and we will definitely edit it in the future lectures so let me leave it and let me go right over here and yeah 
so let me make these things as this so let me make it a little bit smaller and let me uh did everything that we wanted and now we have successfully completed the project and yeah so in your right side is the original and in the left side that is created by our effort so okay so review this course because that will encourage me to post more tutorials like this so that's all of this lecture we in the next lecture thank you so now we are going to create it so yeah so in this lecture we are going to create this particular nft which is very famous which is everybody's nft so thank you for everybody nft so to allowing us to create this lecture so so yeah so in this lecture we are going to create this amazing thing so let me duplicate it and let me keep it in the other artboard as we did in the last lectures so let me keep it in the original folder so that will make sure nothing of our work is get spoiled so let me first select let me first start with the shirt of this cute person so let me grab the curvature tool and oops so the gradient is now coming so let me cancel the fill and let me increase the stroke to 2 points so let me grab the curvature tool again and let me make this particular shirt so yeah so let me thing so the thing is that it is not working so let me uh first edit it because if we didn't do that our work will be spoiled so let me click on alt and let me do it again let me make it blend it a little bit more and so yeah so yes so we have completed it and let me make it a little bit curvy so the next thing we have to do is start connecting it let me click on alt and do it so now it is a perfect thing so the next thing that we have to do is selecting it and let me lock it because that will make and let me go to the curvature tool and let me make it we can also do it with the pen tool but i'm doing it with this particular tool we click on alt to make a straight line there again alt and let me click on alt to make it perfect for the next thing is let me replicate it uh, to the other hand and let me right click it and go to array transform and reflect oops so let me go back and reflect okay so now it is perfect let me make it a uh, little bit smaller and so yes we are doing good so so we have done the first little bit part that we have to do in this lecture so let me grab the curvature tool again or the pen tool will be perfect let me make the lines which are right over there 
So let me create a straight line or let me go to selection tool and let me grab the pen tool again. Okay, so let me copy it and let me use it. So let me come out and let me uh, delete it and let me make a straight line because now in the next move we are going to just replicate it. So let me create a straight line and yeah. So it's looking good. So yeah, so that's good. So let me lock these layers and that will be fine. So let me uh, grab the pen tool and make a last straight line and a shirt. So let me make it and let me lock it. So yes, so we are halfway there and let me go to the curvature tool and make this curve near this neck. So it's looking good and yeah, so let me uh, zoom it a little bit more and let me unhide it and let me click on view. So now we have completed only the shirt but we have more to do in this place. So. So let me go and these things. So now it will be fine, I think so. So yes, yeah, so we have to do much more things. The curve near the hand. So let me do that first in order to make it perfect. So so that is good. And let me try to copy it and paste it. And let me click on right click on it. Go to transform and let me go to reflect. Okay, so let me keep it right out there. Okay, let me move it a little bit more and yeah. Okay. So the thing is that we want to do something. So let me drag a little bit more and let me make it. Make these things perfect. So let me drag it. And yeah, so this might take a while. So let me go to the head. So let me grab the ellipse tool and let me make a perfect circle by holding shift and let me make it but thing is that we can't make it so let me make it a little bit bigger right now okay so made it and yeah so let me lock it and let me go to the curvature tool and let me make these two points and let me do this. So we can also uh, make a ellipse and let and we can also uh, cut it with using the scissors tool but it can take a while so we are doing it to simplify the things. So let me just end it a little bit up and so now it is a little bit more perfect and the next thing will be mostly the hair part. Let me grab the curvature tool and okay so let me do the mouth first and let me because hair is, can take a little bit more while uh, but mouth can't take that much time so let me make it that first and let me make it black 
But for this, we have to make it transparent because we have to make the teeth of this cute person. So let me lock it. Okay. So that looks good. So didn't lock it. Yeah. No. So. But still, there are some errors. Why? Yeah. So the layers are right up there. So that is the reason. So now we can make it more precisely. Okay, so the teeth is good. And let me replicate it and keep it right over here. So that looks good. And the thing is that it looks perfect, but these are all going to this folder, another folder. So let me move it to the my drawing folder. So the thing is going to be completed and next is eyes. So yes. Okay, so now it looks good. And the next eye should be right up there. And so making eyes so can't take that much time. So It's too easy process. Okay, so lock the folder because all the things are going to the original image folder. Okay, so let me make it black because we don't want that. Okay, so Okay, so let me keep it right up there. And the next thing will be definitely our eyebrows. So let me lock these layers in order to make it perfect. And the thing is right over there. So it's not that much professional now, but ending will be so good. So the thing is that we didn't make stroke to the eyes, so the, that is the reason for not visibling this thing. So let me enable the stroke, and that's fine. So the teeth also want some things, so let me unlock these layers, and let me make it a little bit more good. So, so yeah, so that looks great. And let me select the teeth and make it white in color. But the teeth are not that much good. So for that, let me make the background a little blackish. So yeah, we have to make it a little bit broader. And so it look better. The thing is that it can be more good, but we have to do more work. So we can complete it and we can edit more things, which is right over there. Okay, so that looks good. Let me uh, unlock it and let me do some parts of the hair now. And let me lock these layers again. And let me draw the hair of it.
so we have completed with the hair so the next thing probably must be the coloring side but the important thing is the nose for him but the thing is that we have to make the eyebrows next can be the eyes for him or the nose for him so let me make it a little bit good let me place it on the other eye so yeah so it looks good and the next thing will be the nose right now and let me drag it and let me place it so let me hold and hold and let me okay so that looks good and yeah so that looks good and so we have mostly completed it and okay so let me try it and the most of the thing is completed the thing is that we didn't add stroke to it to the hair so let me increase the stroke yeah so it looks good and let me try to do something to make it better and yeah let me add some colors to it and let me uh, use the eyedropper tool and copy the thing and let me do something for it so I just the colors right and let me color it okay so let me add it so now it is perfect and let me increase the stroke to it in order to make it perfect and the thing will be next will be more definitely the face so let me go to layers and let me do something So that looks good. So the next thing let me start coloring his uh, face now so let me uh, unlock these regions so wait a minute so yes Let me give this color. Okay, so let me give the color to him. So there are no, I didn't define the color, right? Okay, so let me copy the color code of it and cancel. So, yes, okay, so paste it and yeah. Okay, so it is good. But the only thing that we should edit is the color of his eyes. So let me go right over here and keep the color of the white. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is join these things. So let me grab the curvature tool and uh, 
so before that I want to edit this so so I have to lock this position okay so this is good and curve is a tool it's right over here so yes there we go okay so this is good and uh, let me see what is the color of it so the same color so okay so it's too easy okay so let me select this first and let me see what is the thing okay so we can start with the coloring now so let me do it first okay so this is good okay so let me add these two things and let me give the color of it no this is not the right way so okay so it is not completed so we join it okay So this is good. So the next thing we can do is probably the shirt because it is more complicated and as well as more difficult. So let me complete that first in order to decrease the work. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So let me double click on the anchor point and to edit it. So okay. So we have to do something for it. So so let me select the shirt outline as okay. So let me try with only the shirt outline. But the only problem with is the hands also get the same color of it. So let me test it out with some colors like this okay so as you can see it is colored with the same color of it so we have to do something for it so the thing we can do is before that so i have to select these two things and let me add some colors right now so like some colors of these okay let me copy it and cancel so let me grab the tool and let me start doing it okay so perfect so the hands got its color and the next thing we have to do is the outline and we have to select all the things so Okay, so let's see what happens now okay so it is perfect enough and yeah so let me get the color code of it this and let me copy the color code and let me cancel so let me paste it right over here and yeah there we go so the difference between this and this is the neck color so let me do something for it so can we can grab the curvature tool and let me okay so let me create this so let me create like this uh, ok 
Okay, so let me copy the color code. Okay, so let me do undo and let me paste it right over here so it is not perfect. Okay, so it is as same as this and the important change is the background. So there comes the difficulty because it is a lot of things are messed up right over there. Okay, so let me tell you how to create this. So let me create a rough background, a rough square and yeah, so let me use the color of this. Okay. So let me send it back first. So send back. Okay, great. So let me trace it and let me do something for it. So okay, so let me give the, some colors of it. Okay, so fill should be none and the stroke should have some colors. Okay, so let me do with that. So let me grab the curves oh, tool and let me do with that. Okay, so let me give some more things. So let me go so let me copy it and let me do this paste in same artboard so let me place it and let me do something okay so let me copy it and and Okay. So let me do these things. Okay. Okay, it is taking a few more time. Okay, so. But time is. It's okay, but we need the perfection of the work. So. Let me do this and uh, yeah, so let me do it for only the top and the bottom I can fill it with it again, okay? So, so let me come down, okay, so this is good and let me do it again. 
so it is taking much much more time than I think because the background is little bit complicated than I think so okay started looking great Okay. Okay. Okay, so let me do the next thing. Okay, so it's going to complete now. Okay, so let me do this first, these things first, because it will be good. And let me select all the things by shift. And yeah, if you have any doubts regarding this course, you can definitely ask me in the Q&A tab. So let me copy it and let me paste it on all outputs. So okay, so it came exactly as it is right over here. So let me copy it. Okay, so let me lock the background first. Okay, so this is good. And yeah. So, okay, so let me copy it again and Okay, so Yes, yeah, we're going to complete it. Yeah Okay, so let me send all these things That means like this and up to this Okay, these are all the things so I don't want to be okay so let me select also okay so the thing which I can do is let me select all these things and uh, So let me put it at the last. Okay. Okay, so I have taken them. So now let me uh, take this and okay, these are all selected and I can uh, log them. So the thing which I can do is somewhat like this. So let me undo my move. So let me, as I said before, let me take these things to another panel, so under this, let me take it. So now, let me select these things. So let me uh, okay. So the thing I can do is unlock all these things. Okay, so this should be like this. Let me select these things and let me right click on it and arrange bring print okay so 
I have to send these things above the artboard. Okay, here is the artboard and let me paste it. Okay, so okay, so let me unlock these things. Okay, so now it is perfect and uh, let me delete these things because it's not quite professional. Okay, so I have to make some corrections in the teeth of this person. So let me delete these things first because everything is perfect but the teeth is quite unprofessional so I have to make this happen so okay so before that I have to make this completed let me copy it and paste it and keep it so let me select these two and select copy and paste in all outputs okay so this is perfect right now and there are no issues in it so finally we have completed this and this is amazing because this is this took nearly more than 35 minutes of recording and it is one of the longest time taken lecture so I surely recommend you to practice these things so in order to get practice in these projects so hope you like this lecture so if, if you have any doubts regarding, regarding this course don't hesitate to ask me I will answer your questions within one day so thank you and meet you in the next what are the main of four principles for winning a uh, winning logo design let's explore the four pillars of logo designing with actual ex live examples in today's video right here at this course there is going to be a test at the very end of the today's video so do make sure to follow Lang and listen for graphic design principles and maybe learn a thing or two about graphic design workflow now you might have heard about some of these before but do follow along so you can be reminded of how crucial important these four principles are and see if you are doing right in your leg of design process it might be a good idea to bookmark today's video so you can refer back to it at any point of in future logo design projects simplicity logo designs do need to be simple for many many important reasons firstly if the logo is busy and over complicated the message of the brand isn't going to be conveyed that well and this could cause damage to the brand's effectiveness and the success simple logo designs is easy to remember which is a huge win for any brand or business they do want to remain in the minds of the end cons consumers which is crucially important Now here's a small trick that branding agency and professional logo designers know about. Brands want to play on the emotion of their consumers and if their logo design is simple then the user is going to react emotionally to that design whereas a complicated and intricate design is going to be result in cognition being used as opposed to emotion. Second, brands and business want their logo design to evoke emotion because that then leads to more of an affinity with the brand and thus more spending on the consumer's part. So the key takeaway from the first principle of simplicity is that logo design should be simple so it's more memorable in the end user or consumer of that very logo design. 
less is often more when it comes to designing a logo and so trying and simplify your logo as much as possible second scalability you're looking at a sign might look really neat for your desktop screen but take that logo and then put it on a 5 mil is 85 mil and see how that works out for you now how is that logo just turned into a smudgy blurry mess well if it has that's why scalability is so important for look design a client is probably looking logo on business cards apps brushes and maybe even as a favicon and if you don't know favicons are it is very famous there is a component logo design be aware of this along every step or in the logo design process and you should always pay attention to the scalability of your logo design while working on them so scalability is really really crucial in modern day graphic design because smartphones are the really accessible resource to the internet and thus brands and companies are going to have their logo on very small screens more and more and more with each coming year and so you really need to be make sure your logos are scalable specifically for smartphones and other forms of media too third legibility one of the most important local design the principles if not the single most important one is legibility this can link back to the scalability but but it also is so much more than that sometimes designers will try to be clever or unique by incorporating designs elements that are very really abstract but this can leave the end user scratching their heads and not really understanding or the logo symbol refers to or the in the case of typographic logos they can't even read what it says now head scratches are bad for business and so the logo should be legible at the drop of the hat and easily recognizable you also want to make sure that the logo type is legible so considering things like kerning lettering size weights and also font pairing when designing the logo as a whole so like with simplicity you don't really want to add too much to the logo design and you don't add too many elements that confuse the message clever is not only better and you need to make sure really, really strong impact with one solid graphic design and so the logo type and the logo symbol will really do need to be memorable to that end user fourth relevancy How many of the three previous points consider in your logo designs? Well, as let's move on the fourth one and that is relatability. How does the logo relate to the brand's message and the end user? This is something you really want to think about and consider because it is one of the most fundamental aspects of a logo design. When relating back to the brand, does your design respect the brand's message? Your choice of Lego type and the logo mark itself is essential, the voice of the brand. And so you need to understand that voice. Is it friendly and loud? Maybe it's modest and quiet. It could be superior or proud voice. Just think about it. What is the voice and how can you represent it with a single design that is essential 
what a huge part of logo design is all about it's just figuring out the voice of the brand of the business and then communicating that voice in a simple easy to remember logo design how reliable relatable the logo is to the brand target market is really really important to the success of the business as a whole and thus attraction of company actually gets after the logo has been launched there are many elements to make this business success but the logo design is really key and crucial element that means to be done correctly for the success of the brand or the business but let's test your knowledge and also your awareness because we are gonna head right into the quiz now on all the content in today's video so which one of these wasn't a logo design principle that I've talked about in this today's lecture scalability hierarchy simplicity and legibility it's hierarchy and no multiple choice for this but what is the key reason for simplicity in a logo design it is it makes a logo design memorable in the video I said brands makes use of simplicity in a logo design by evoking what urgency cognition emotion reliability It is emotion. No multiple choice for this also. Apart from business cards, which accessible resources did I say logo designs appear very small in scale? That is smartphones. What is the most likely to be the smallest instance a logo design will be seen in? Favicon, business card, browser, social media profile picture. That is Favicon. Without multiple choice, which logo did I show in the video that has a poor legibility? That is London Wally Pink 2012 logo. In the last, in the video, apart from brand's message, what else should be the logo relate to? History of the brand, consumer's option, opinions, target market, spending habits. That is target market. So that's all with this lecture. Meet you in the next lecture. Thank you. So hi guys. Welcome to our new logo design basics class. So in this lecture we are going to see about what, what are the best fonts that are used in logo creation. So font 
plays a major role in logo design because this can attract more customers based on its view so i am going to say you six different fonts that are best in the modern logo creation so so let's start from the last to the first so let me move it right over here and yeah so the first font that we are going to use and that is so let me keep it as six and that is mont yeah you have heard it right m o n t mont okay so let me give you an example for this so let me create a new ad board right over here and let me place it right over there okay so let me remove these two and let me type something in mont adobe so i'm going to type the same words with different fonts or uh, font style so this is the font style of this so this will be mostly used i think it is used in the adidas logo so i'm not sure but it looks like the same so this is definitely the mont let me name it as mont okay so let me make it little bit smaller and let me go to the next particular thing so that is the fifth one is definitely intro so this is one of my uh, most favorite font so let me say why okay so let me keep it at the okay so intro is the next useful font so let me show you why so let me type the same adobe so this is the thing so let me draw so this is the font i am saying you right now so it is most commonly used in the modern logos and most of the designers like this font to work with so that is intro so let me type intro okay so the next font will be fourth is gil roy let me type it right over here let me change it to okay so let me show you the example of it and the thing is kill roy let me type adobe okay there are two fonts i have installed one is regular and one is heavy so i'm going to use the heavy version so yeah but there are a lot of modulations but i have installed only two so yeah i in the end of the lecture i'm going to give you some thing which is very useful about the fonts so i'm going to type l roy Okay, so let me make it a little bit smaller. Let me 
grab the eyedropper tool okay so it looks good and the next thing is going to be something like this so let me copy it um, the third one is Helvetica so this very famous font that most of you might know so I'm gonna keep it right over here and let me move my window right over here so the next thing is the Helvetica and let me take my tool let me keep it right over here let me type hell vertica so there are a lot of font size so I'm gonna use it so there are a lot of things to use in the same font so I'm gonna use this so this is a minimus minimalistic logo design so this font is mostly used in the minimalistic logo design so that's all with this and the next thing will be something like this yeah the second one is insane burger so I'm gonna type something over here I do okay so, so that is the font size which is right over here and this is the font I'm saying about so the last and final one is the most beautiful thing that I love to use so that is the font you are currently seeing in Norvester so let me move right over here and let me show you the same thing I'm gonna type okay so let me keep it right over here and let me change to Norvesta so this is the font I'm saying about so this is the most wonderful font that I'm using for most of my logo designs and the clients are much satisfied with this font size so but this is not the thing that I'm going to say because if you are working with a, a specific niche this font may vary because I am working with a specific or a targeted niche logo design so I am very suitable for with this logo fonts which are the novest uh, in Sanibug and Helvetica, Gilroy, Intro and Mont so I am very much satisfied with these fonts but if you are with a different niche this may vary totally so if you are going to make a logo for a pet shop this may vary if you are going to create a logo for a school or a university this may totally change and the elements in the logo might change insanely so this is not about these things but these are the good options these are the good fonts that are available in illustrator but the only problem with with it is you can't find these fonts in Adobe Illustrator as pre-installed 
so as you can see adobe illustrator can install only a little bit limited of amounts of fonts when you install it so you have to go to the adobe font website and you have to activate it or you can simply go to the illustrator masterclass folder and there you can get all the font zip size and you can extract it and you can install it in the next lecture i'm going to tell you how to install the font using that zip file so that's all in this lecture meet in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome to our new adobe illustrator tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to see how to create a new template file in illustrator so when you when we are learning about file menu we saw about new from template so if you are a professional graphic designer you will be bored to create a new project in illustrator with a same default settings that you use for all the logos or other things that you create in illustrator so in this lecture we are going to see how to create that and get started and save your tons and tons of time when working with illustrator so the first thing is go to file new and select the default options that you use when you are creating a new project so let me give it a name for something like logo design okay so let me uh, give it same as rgb and <clears throat> let me save it uh keep it to pixels or yeah pixels will be right and the next thing we we can create a new project so the next thing you have to do is edit your toolbar so this thing i didn't teach you right now so i'm going to teach you this how to edit a toolbar so in the toolbar there are tons and tons of tools that are available in illustrator so to be exact there are 87 plus tools in illustrator right now in adobe 2023 version so we are not going to use all the tools in illustrator except a bunch of regularly using tools so it is better to keep them in the toolbar and remove the others which you you doesn't use okay so now to edit the toolbar just go to this three icons click on that and this particular section rises up so simply drag and drop the things that you doesn't want so i don't want this perspective grid tool so i'm going to drag it and drop it right over here and even uh the mesh tool so let me speed up the thing and don't bore you with the things which we use so if you accidentally send this right over here and how we can restore it by just dragging it and keeping it right over here so like this way you can restore your accidental moves so let me move it to the trash and the next thing will be the definitely something like this
So, Okay, so these are the tools that I commonly use but to be frank I don't use the toolbar much because I'm very handy with the shortcuts that are there in Illustrator. So I don't use much of these but I will use toolbars very rarely. So, so we have done with the toolbar and let me do customizations in the palettes. So, Okay, so let me leave this as it is because this is the most useful thing that Adobe Illustrator ever created. So I'm gonna leave it as it is and this is the most useful thing and the most of the time I use will be with this properties panel. Okay. So after you have customized all the things, so just go to right over here. Okay. So click on this and click on new workspace. So let me give it a name which is logo design template. Okay. So there we go. So just go to the file and new from template and copy this particular path let me cancel this and now let me go to save as template and paste this mostly it will be the same place and I'm gonna save it as logo design template so let me save it so my laptop is showing some errors so it will be perfectly fine after you save it, save it and you can just click on new from template and you can select the particular one which you just created okay so that's all with this lecture meet in the next lecture Thank you. Hi guys, in this lecture we are going to create an awesome business card in Illustrator. So, for that let me go to file, new and let me name it as card creation. Okay. So the size is nearly 3.5 inches so it is 3.5 inches to 2 2 and the art board is 1 and the orientation is like this and the colors are especially RGB and let me create on create so this is the this is the 
thing and yeah so i forgot one thing because there should be two sides for a business card so the first one will be like this and yeah so let me take this as an inspiration and started creating it so the first thing we want to create is this and let me create this it should be like this something like this and the next thing is the color so it is a white color so we don't want to worry about that and the next is definitely the triangle let me go to the polygon tool and let me create a triangle so let me create like this and the stroke should be incredibly high so the next is like this because it is perfectly synchronizing right over there and we do like this yes okay so it is like this and let me do like this so the stroke should be like something like this so let me go to stroke and keep it at this color and yeah so the first thing has been completed and the fill should be nothing but we are going to change it to white in a minute so the next important thing is the the black color triangle which is upside down in that orientation so let me make it like this Okay. Okay. So let me look at right over there. And yeah. So this little bit like that. And let me change it to black. That looks good. And yeah. So it is looking good. And the thing which I want to do is to match it with this shape so that we can create something good. So let me click on this particular thing and let me move it. So now it will be perfect enough. Yeah, so let's okay so let me go right over here and as you can see very little space is occupied by the white and other things are red so i have to move it right over there and the other things are quite good and let me move it a little bit up and now it is looking good and the end point of view is a little bit sharper in this case uh, i have to move it a little bit up like this yeah so the next thing will be the polygon which is right over there so let me click over here and let me click on this so let me cancel it first and it has exactly six sides so let me click on 6 and yeah so let me make it fully red and for that let me make it red fill should be red and this should be red okay so the corner should be a little bit bended yes, okay so it is in the shape of C so let me grab the text tool and type C, be capital C, so okay. Okay, so let me take this because it is as similar as that. Okay, 
is good and yeah the next is the company's logo was completed the next is company so let me keep it right over here and then last thing should be your tagline your tag line here so it shouldn't be in this color because it doesn't look good so let me keep it at the color of something like this or it's a little bit darker so in order to but let me achieve it like this yeah so it looks good and yeah so so that's all we have mostly completed things so let me do something like this and yeah the most of the things is now completed in the first part and the next part should be right over here so let me create the same circle uh, angle so let me keep but I'll write over here okay so let me rotate it 90 degrees so it should be like this but this is not exactly that let me move it a little bit further do okay so it is good the next thing is the this triangle is upside the facing front so face it like front and let me keep it right over here yes okay okay so the last thing mostly will be the icon so that is not the thing that we are going to do because we can easily locate it by downloading the icons from the internet and the thing we are going to create only the text so so let me leave it like this let me reduce the size let me keep it something like this and the stroke too okay okay so it is a place for keeping the names and the first thing will be the name of the person which is something like your name let me keep it a little bit smaller because it is an so let me keep it as your job role Okay, so the next is something like the phone number and let me type something like this plus one one two three four five six eight nine zero okay let me keep it right over here let me copy the same number and place it right over here okay so the next thing will be your gmail address so let me copy it and paste it your email at name com and yes okay
Okay, so next thing to be the address. Let me copy it and paste. So, your street name and your city and the next thing will be your country tree and yeah so that's all so so the next thing is the zip code so, comma zip is equal to zero 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 Okay, so that is cool. And yeah, there we go. Let me copy these things and make it a little bit further go. And yeah, so we are at the end of the tutorial. And yeah, so. So that's all. So. and yeah so that is that's all of this thing that's all of this lecture meet in the next lecture hello guys in this lecture we are going to see how to download a font for illustrator so first select a font that you want to create for that you have to use in your project so first thing let me say you how to download a font so open your favorite browser so open the group google chrome and i recommend you to follow the same to follow along okay so let me click on the search tab and search for something like an example of intro intro font download yeah free download is much more better and click on the first option which is from default free so scroll down a little bit and click on download so click on download again and close and it will be downloaded in a second and click on it so click on extract and click ok so as to all and yeah so it is downloaded and let me check it right over there and now it is downloaded in my computer and click on it and you can click on install but i've already installed it but i don't want to do it and in most of the cases you don't want to restart the illustrator again because in the latest versions Adobe is not uh, letting the users to go out and reload the illustrator again so illustrator is automatically reloaded to open the font so let me uh, search for intro and now it is right over there so that's how you can download a font from the internet and extract it and you can install it so the important thing which is right out there it's it should be the type of otf which is open type font file it should be in that particular format to install the font properly so that's how you can download all the files that are given in the illustrator master class file so that's all with this lecture meet you in the next lecture thank you hi guys welcome to a new lecture in this lecture we are going to see how to yarn using illustrator skills so So that is the thing which we are going to see in this lecture. So 
the best ways to earn using illustrator skills are being a freelancer and publishing your books on KDP which is also known as Kindle Direct Publishing. So I'm going to teach you every single steps to earn money from Illustrator using Illustrator skills. So, so let me open my Chrome browser and I suggest to use you the same because it will be much more easy and comfortable to follow up. So let me type for Fiverr. So most of you might be aware of this particular website which is Fiverr which is most famous for illust for freelancers. So most of the freelancers come here and do the job. So, so let me open this website and yeah so this is the interface of this website so let me click on this particular thing which is graphic and design which is related to our category so the first thing is logo design which is most famous in Fiverr so so here you can see there are many logo designers who are right over here and doing their job so you can see there are tons and tons of freelancers right over here so let me take the look of this particular thing so this is most famous and because there are more customers and it is the rate is too high so let me give you an example so these are all the examples of their projects like this 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 which are quite simple but very very targeted niche so let me give you an example so if i look at this logo you can easily find that this logo is direct, uh, is basically used for an, a saloon uh, or a parlor so this logo is used maybe used for that and yeah so it is related to, to the hair and the next thing is this logo is little bit like adventurous so this may be something like cycles or the adventurous sports kits like breasts shoes or cycles or motorbikes related to adventure so this may be used like a pet shop so if you look at a logo it should be related to the specific niche so like this you can specify the thing so the base cost of this particular gig in fiverr we call it as gig which is this full page so the basic plan of it is nearly $95. It is the starting plan and they will only include five logo designs with unlimited revisions. Unlimited revisions. Revisions means the number of changes. Like if you uh, take a this look, if I don't want this orange color shadow which is at the back, I can ask the freelancer to remove that and give it. So like that we can make little bit changes in that okay so the standard plan is nearly 200 bucks and the premium plan is nearly 300 bucks so this is too high and you might think that this seller might got nearly over 100 or maximum 200 sales but that is not the case right here because this seller has more than 10,000 clients how is it possible? Just right over here. So you can see that nearly 5,600 people have reviewed this particular person for only this gig. And there are 72 orders in queue. 72 persons have given the work to 
this particular freelancer and they are waiting for the work to complete so if you calculate it so let me go to the calculator and let me take it at a $95 at all the people have buy only the $95 plan so I have already said that this person has got nearly 10,000 sales and into $100 so let me keep it like that and wow this person had made nearly a million dollar in this particular gig from this particular gig the 10,000 is minimum because as per the survey conducted by the Google Google says that only 43% of the people who buy a service or a online course review other people just skip the review and they don't review in this case 43% so it is nearly doubled which is nearly 11,000 if you double it so into hundred dollars because we can't say that all the persons have buy only this some people might buy this or this and that's how it varies so if I go here and let me search it yeah nearly 1.1 million dollars from this so you can see lot of sellers right over here so So now you can ask me a question how many people are coming to this particular website which is Fiverr so because visitors per month is very very important factor that might drive you sales so I have the answer for this so let me go to this extension which I've added which is called similar web I use it quite often to find a traffic and the geographical location of the visitors so as you can see right over here the monthly visits for this website with this particular website is 65 million users which is insane and nearly 6.5 crore people are coming to this site so the most of the visitors come from United States and from Pakistan and the next is India so these are the countries which are more visitors for Fiverr and the next is UK and the next is Bangladesh so there are tons of visitors which are coming only from US which are the more client coming from there so so like this you can create a gig and post it so this is not the only website that is for freelancing the next famous website is absolutely up work which is another amazing thing which is mostly similar to the Fiverr and let me go right over here so let me search for logo design so as you can see this first person from Ukraine is earning nearly 31.47 dollars per hour so this person is charging 31 dollars per hour he work so that is way too large and yeah you can see that this person had earned over forty thousand dollars from this gig so the next thing is this person this person also comes from the UK sorry Ukraine and this person is charging nearly thirty four dollars per hour and he had earned nearly thirty thousand dollars okay so this person is charging nearly 32 dollars an hour and he is earning he has earned five thousand dollars so this person is relatively more famous than all of the others 
because I have contacted him and he is so so professional in his work so this person is charging nearly $32 and he is uh, nearly $10,000 so the next thing is this person this person is nearly insane amount of earning and he is from United States and this person charges $70 per hour which is nearly 1.1 dollars a minute which is insane and he had earned nearly 3 lakh dollars in his gig so the next thing is from Macedonia uh, next from Ukraine and Portugal Bulgaria and Serbia so like this you can post your gig and get hired from the visitors so the number of visitors come to this website is nearly 45 million which is nearly 56 percentage of the visitors coming to Fiverr so most of the visitors again come from US from India Philippines Pakistan and Bangladesh so that's all about freelancing and the next way of freelancing is creating books using illustrator so i'm going to show you how to create the books for launching your own book store so that is a pretty simple job so you, you might be a little bit afraid of do i want to put a store in physical place and do i want to sell it that's not needed because there is an amazing platform to do it for you which is KDP it also stands for Kindle Direct Publishing which is done by Amazon so most of you would be aware of Kindle Direct Publishing or just Kindle so you can publish a book right away from here and you can upload the books so right now i have created a, a brand new kindle kdp account for my client and i have given him but i have to post some books to in order to make sure everything works fine so in that account i'm going to show you how to upload books for your kdp career so let's get started right into the tutorial 